Oh, praise you the most high. So tonight's topic is called pray for vengeance. Pray for vengeance. We must pray for vengeance, of course. Oh, praise you the Lord. Let's open up with the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 1. 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 1. 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 1. Come on. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which mm. I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So now this is our forefather, the prophet Ezra, okay? The most High God put the spirit upon him to deliver this prophecy unto us in these last days. Read again, verse 1. 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 1. Mm. Behold, Speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. You know what? You know why he's saying what he's saying there? He says, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. Give me that in Revelation 13, okay? Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. Watch this. He says, speak thou in the ears of my people. Watch this. Because as a people, we are dull of hearing. That's why he's saying what he's saying right there. Read what you got. Revelation 13, verse 9. Come on. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. If Wait. any man have an ear, let him hear. You see what he's saying? If any man have an ear, let him hear. If you've got spiritual ears open, you're going to receive spiritual things. Give me that in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5. Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 11. Okay, read that. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. Read. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. You see what he was, th this was the problem with our people, dull of hearing. It was back then, so it is today. Okay? Now give me Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Because this is what Christ said. Why? But the reason why he kept saying this, he that has an ear let him hear, because our people, we have no faith. Give me that in Luke chapter 9, verse 41 first. Then we're going to jump down to verse 44. Come on. Luke chapter 9, verse 41. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. You see what he's saying? He says, O faithless and perverse generation. Who was he talking to? He was talking to our forefathers, the apostles. You understand? So now the apostles, which did great and mighty works back then, they are still doing it today because they are back. But guess what he said to them? He says, oh, faithless and perverse generation. So if, the, if Christ said this about the generations back then, what about us this day? Jump down to verse 44. Come on. Verse 44. Mm -hmm. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. What did he say? Let these sayings sink down into your ears. He said, let these sayings of his sink down into your ears. If you have ears to hear, you're going to receive spiritual things. You're going to understand what the, the spirit is saying. You understand? Come on. For the son of man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Because many of our forefathers did not believe this thing. Go give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 32 verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 20. Watch this. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20. Read. And he said, I will hide my face from them. Mm -hmm. I will see what their end shall be. For Come they on. are a very forward generation. Children in mm -hmm. whom is no faith. You see what he's saying? Children in whom is no faith. Because as a people, we have no faith. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? Because our forefathers, when we left Egypt, when Moses was teaching us the law, guess what? We were rebelling against Moses. Why? Because of what? Lack of faith. Okay? So that's why he said what he said to Ezra. So go back to 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 1 again. 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 1. Read. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, mm -hmm. which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. You see that thing? So if any man has an ear, let him hear. Come on. Verse 2. Read. And cause them to be written in paper. Mm -hmm. For they are faithful and true. Cause them to be written in the Bible. That's what it's called today. Okay. 
for they are faithful and true because they are faithful and true, meaning they will surely come to pass. That's what he's saying right there. Give me that in Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. He says, because they are faithful and true. Everything that's written in this Bible, it has happened. Some has happened already now. Today is history. Some are yet to, to come to pass. Okay. Give me that in Isaiah 34, verse 16. Read that. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Come on. Take ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Mm -hmm. Read. No one of these shall fail. You see what he's saying? No one of the, hold on, no one of these shall fail. Meaning the laws that are written in this book, none of them are going to fail. The words in the Bible, they will not fail. They will surely come to pass. Come on. None shall want her mate. Mm -hmm. For my mouth hath it it hath commanded. Come on. And his spirit it hath gathered them. And his spirit it hath gathered them. The spirit of the Lord had gathered the words of this book together. Okay, that's what he's saying right there. Go back to where he was at now. Second Ezra chapter 15, read verse 3 now. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 3. Read. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Mm -hmm. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that Come speak on. against thee. Because when we go out to prophesy to our people to pray for vengeance, pray for the destruction of our enemies. They don't believe that thing. Instead, they speak against us. The law says, fear not the imagination against thee. Because our people, they imagine evil against us when we read the words of God as it is written. You understand? It says, let not the incredulity. What is the word incredulity mean? Meaning lack of unbelief. You understand? Doubt. Because that's what our people have in their minds. They are doubtful. He says, don't let their unbelief trouble you you understand that speak against thee so understand you are the people are going to speak against you you will be evil spoken of when we keep these laws in these last days so it was it was back then so it is today come on verse four read verse four mm -hmm. for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness you see what the bible is saying for all the unfaithful meaning our people that don't believe what is written in this book the law says they're going to die in their unfaithfulness. They are going to die in their sins. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Second Ezra 16 verse 35. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 35. Read what you got. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 35. Um, mm -hmm. Hear now these sayings and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, hear now these things, these things and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. Give me that in Leviticus 25, verse 55. Hear now these things. What things? The words of the prophecy. The words of prophecy that we read in 2 Ezra 15, verse 1 through, verse 1 through 4. That's the things that we're supposed to understand and hear. Okay? Leviticus 25, verse 55. Read that. Leviticus chapter 25 is 55. Come on. For unto me, the children of Israel are servants. They are what? Our servants. The children of Israel are servants. We are the servants of the Most High God. Come on. They are my servants, whom mm -hmm. I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. He is letting you know who the, who the servants are, the children of Israel. Whom, he says, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. Because we was the ones that we was delivered out of Egypt, out of the hand of Pharaoh. You understand? So he's being very specific who he's talking to. Not spiritual Israel, mm -mm. physical people on earth that went into slavery, colonization and forced migration. Okay? Go back to where was that? Second Ezra 16 verse 35 again. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 35. Read. Really? Hear now these things and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. Ye children of Israel, whom the Lord delivered us out of the hand of the Egyptians. Okay, read. Behold, the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe, believe it. not. Believe it. It says, behold, the word of, behold, the word of the Lord, believe it. That's what it means, receive it. Okay, that's why it says, deliver this word unto them. You understand? Because they are faithful and true. Read again, verse 36. 
Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Behold, the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. He said, don't believe the gods of whom the Lord spake. What is he talking about? The gods of these other nations. They're so-called gods. Give me that in Psalms, okay? Give me that in Psalms chapter 96. He says, don't believe these gods whom the Lord spake. The gods of these other nations. They are idols, okay? Give me that in Psalms 96 verse 4. Read that. Psalms chapter 96 verse 4. Come on. For the Lord is great and greatly mm. to be praised. He Wait. is to be feared above all gods. He is to be feared above all gods. So the Lord is letting you know, he says, that's why he says, believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. That's what we're reading here. Come on. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord mm. made the heavens. You see what he's saying? For all the gods of the nations are idols. Meaning what? They are dumb idols. They, they have no breath. You understand? And yet the nations believe on those, those idols and our people are following, are following behind them. You understand? Sacrificing unto devils and not to the most high. Okay? Go back to 2 Ezra, chapter 16, verse 36. The reason why we're bringing this up is that our people don't believe this Bible. Our people don't believe the things that are written in it, or despite all the evidence, all the historical proof that we present to them, they still don't believe it. But the law says, teach them anyway, so that it can be a witness against them in the day of judgment. Read what you got. Second Ezra 16, verse 36. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Behold, the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not mm -hmm. the gods of whom the Lord speak. Jump down to verse 40. Come on. Verse 40. Oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. You see what the Lord is saying? The Lord is saying, this is not your rest. This is not our rest, brothers and sisters. We're here to pay for our prison sentence. He says, oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle. In those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Meaning the evils that will come upon us for breaking God's commandments, he says, in those evils, he says, we must be even, we must even be as pilgrims upon the earth. Refugees, you understand? Ready to go at any time because this is not our rest. Give me that in Micah 2, okay? Micah chapter 2. Micah 2 and verse 10, read that. This is not our rest. That's why it says we must be as pilgrims upon the earth. Read what you got. Come on. Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Read. Arise ye and depart. Mm -hmm. For this is not your rest. You see because what it says? It says arise ye. Hold on. Arise ye and depart. Arise out of sleep. Wake up out of sleep, Israel. Okay. And depart. Meaning what? Separate yourself from these heathens and their customs, for this is not your rest. Because this is not our rest. That's why it says we must even be as pilgrims upon the earth. Go ahead. For this is not your rest. Because it mm. is polluted, it shall it destroy what? you. Because it is polluted. Because this place is polluted. You understand? Because we are a colony. We are a colonial state here in Mzanzi, South Africa. We are a British colonial state. You understand? And America comes out of Britain. They all work together to enslave us, to make us to pay colonial tax. You understand? While they are robbing us on a daily basis of our resources. Read it again. Verse 10. Come on. Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest. Because Wait. it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even mm. with destruction. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, we must not rest here. We must be as pilgrims upon the earth because this place is polluted with what? Sin, Christianity, wickedness, okay? Islam, you understand? Democracy, it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. So the Lord is warning us. 
You understand? So go back to where he was at, Second as the 16 verse 40. Read that again. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 40. Read. O oh, my people, hear my word. Mm -hmm. Make you ready to the battle. It says what? Those, make you ready to the battle. Make you ready to the battle. Go ahead. And in those evils, be, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He says we must be as pilgrims upon the earth. But watch this. He says we must what? We must we must be ready to the battle. Watch this. Give me that in Second Ezra chapter seven, verse fifty-six. Second Ezra, chapter seven, verse fifty-six. Read that. Second Ezra chapter seven, verse fifty-six. Read. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we mm. considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. He says, while we lived and committed iniquity, because we committed sin upon this earth until we're brought into this truth to repent, okay? He says, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Now, that's a, that's a hard saying, because after death, your, your flesh will be destroyed. Guess what? Your spirit will suffer after death. You understand? That, that's eternal damnation. That's eternal death. Go ahead. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition mm -hmm. of the battle. Which this man is the what? This is the condition of the battle. This is the condition of the battle that Ezra is talking about in Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 40, when he says, Make you ready to the battle. What are you fighting for? You are fighting for deliverance. You understand? You are fighting for your soul to be delivered as well. So that when your body gets destroyed, your, 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 because guess what? If you don't, we don't survive this, guess what? We're going to suffer eternal death. You understand? The lake of fire. None of us want that. Okay. That's what he's saying. He says, then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle. What is the battle? Read verse 56 again. So we understand. Read. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 56. Mm -hmm. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Because that's not, our people don't think like that. They don't think, they only think that you only live once, you're low. No, 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 that's not in the Bible. You live, you die, the Lord brings you back. There is no escaping the Lord's judgment, okay? That's the condition of the battle. You commit sin, you think that you're not going to be judged when you die, guess what? The Lord will bring you back. In the day of the final judgment, you are going to be resurrected and the Lord will judge you on that day. Okay, come on. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle, which mm -hmm. man that is born upon the earth shall fight. When he says man that is born upon the earth, is talking about a man that is born again. A man that is born again. When you are born again, this is the battle that you're going to have to fight. Okay, come on. That if he overcome, that if he be overcome. No, no. If he be overcome, overcome by what? The sins. You understand? Meaning he does not overcome the sins that he's dealing with. But if he be overcome by those sins, read. He shall suffer as thou hast said. As, as thou hast said in verse 56. Come on. But if he get the victory. Mm -hmm. So receive the thing that I see. So the victory, what is the victory? The kingdom of heaven on earth. Come on. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, mm -hmm. choose the life that thou mayest live. You see what he's saying? So the life that Moses gave unto us was the what? The commandments. Moses gave us the commandment, which was the life. You understand? It says, while he lived, saying, Choose the life, okay, that thou mayest live. God's commandments give us life. If you read Proverbs 7, verse 2. Go ahead. Nevertheless, they believed not him. You see what they did? No. Our people don't believe. They did not believe the prophets back then. They still, they don't believe the prophets today. Okay, read. No, yet the prophets after him. Mm -hmm. No, no me which have spoken unto them. Read. 
that there should not be such heaviness in their destruction as shall be joy over them that are persuaded to salvation. So the people that are going to have joy is those that are what persuaded to salvation. Because when we go out there, we persuade our people to come into this truth. We persuade our people to, re to, to repent and keep God's commandments so they can get the kingdom. Right now, that's what we're doing. That's the grace period. You understand? The Lord is using the prophets as a what? To pacify the Lord's wrath over the people. Like he did before time, he's doing it this day. Okay? Go back to where was that? Second Ezra 16 verse 14. Read. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Because this is not our rest. That's why it says, be as pilgrims upon the earth. Because this is not our rest. Because what Ezra is going to go over is the judgments that will come upon us for breaking God's laws. You understand? Jump down to verse 42 now. Okay, come on. Verse 42. He that occupieth merchandise, as he that hath no profit by it. Really? And he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. Now, this is a heavy statement right here. Remember, this is the judgments that will come upon us for breaking God's commandments. We will be scattered around the world, you understand? But he says, as part of God's judgments, if we do not obey that which is written, is as he that occupied merchandise, as he that has no profit by it. Meaning you occupy, you, you have merchandise, that means you have resources and so forth, but you're not going to profit by those resources that you got. And he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. You're going to build houses, but you will not dwell in those houses. Somebody else will. Somebody else will take them from you. Okay? Watch this. He that occupied merchandise as he that had no profit by it. I want to deal with that just for a second. Watch this. Give me the book of Micah chapter 2 verse 2. Okay? Because somebody else will come and occupy merchandise. That means we will own merchandise. You understand? Give me that in Micah 2. Micah chapter 2. Before you get Micah, give me Deuteronomy 20, verse 33. I think I want to start there. Deuteronomy 20, verse 33. I want to show you something this day. Pay attention. Okay, Deuteronomy 20, verse 33. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 33. Come on. The fruits of thy land and all thy labors mm -hmm. shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Come on. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. He says, we shall be only oppressed and crushed always. Read that thing again, verse 33. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 33. Mm -hmm. The fruits of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So now he's saying the fruit of our lands, okay, this is part of the judgment, the fruit of our lands, and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So now you might be thinking, why am I going over this? But yet the topic says, pray for vengeance. Just pay close attention. It says the fruit of our land and all our labors. Now think about this here. The fruit of our lands, as we know, is the mineral resources that we have upon the land. That also goes into the fruit and veggies, you understand? But it also, most importantly, goes into what? The mineral resources upon earth, your gold, your diamond, your timber, and so forth, okay? But the question you have to ask yourself is this, right? It says, the fruit of our land shall all our, and all our labors shall another nation come and eat it up, and we're going to be oppressed and crushed always. Watch this. Give me the book of Micah 2, verse 2, because this man, who's this going into? This is the white man. The Dutch, the British, the French, the Portuguese, and so on. That's them, mainly, primarily. Okay? Micah 2, verse 2. The fruit of our land. The fruit of our land is the resources. The land question, that's what I want to deal with in a second. Okay? Read that. Micah 2, verse 2. Watch this. Micah chapter 2, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And they covered fields and take them by violence. And houses and take them away. Okay, read verse 2 again. Micah chapter 2, verse 2. 
and they covered fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. So now this is Micah prophesying on what would the white men do in these last days, okay? He's talking about the Assyrians, but he's also going into the white men in these last days. He says, and they covered fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. You see that part right there when it says a man and his heritage, they covered fields. The fields is the land. You understand? Remember what we read in Deuteronomy 28. It says the fruit of thy land. I want to deal with the land. The fruit of thy land, okay, and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. How would they get access to the fruit of the land? I mean, access to the land, they would take the land by violence. You understand? But the question you have to ask yourself, how did this white man know to come here? Why didn't he go to China? Why didn't the white man go to America, for instance? No, but he did go to America. But I mean, from that time until this day, mainly primarily they are here on the continent of Africa. How did he know? How does he know that this light here is the fattest land on the planet Earth? How does he know that? Because remember, it says, read that again, verse 2. Pay close attention here, okay? Read. Micah, chapter 2, verse 2. Read. Woe to them that devise iniquity. No, 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 verse 2, verse 2, come on. Micah, chapter 2, verse 2. And mm -hmm. they covered fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they Read. oppress a man and his house, even a mm -hmm. man and his heritage. So now the question is, yes, yeah, says the white man coveted our fields. He got because he's got the spirit of covetousness. He's greedy. Okay. So the Lord says they covered our fields and take our fields, our lands by violence. They didn't, they didn't vote. You understand? They didn't negotiate for it. They came and took them by violence, guns blazing, okay? And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. The question is, how did he know? How did he know to come to this place and to remain here, you understand, and enrich himself? How did he know the riches that are sitting on this land? How does he know? You understand? Because we're in South Africa, but he's all, he's all over the continent. He's in the Congo, okay? He's in Nigeria, you understand? So he's on the continent, he's in Namibia, okay? He's in Gabon, okay? He's in Mozambique. He's here in South Africa as well. Now watch this. Give me the book of Genesis, okay? Give me Genesis 2 verse 10. Let me show you how this white man knew. How did he know? How did he know to come here and to stay and remain here and set up shop here and take over? How did they know? Okay, read that. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2 verse 10 for me. Read that. Genesis chapter 2 verse 10. Come on. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden. And mm. from thence it was parted and became into four heads. So now it says there's a river that went, went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became, and became into four heads. Now watch this. This river right here, it says it went out of Eden. Where is the garden of Eden at? Give me that in uh, Galatians 4.26 real quick. Galatians 4 verse 26. Okay, Galatians 4. Let's read that. The most is going to tell us where the Garden of Eden is. Okay, watch this. Galatians 4, verse 26. Read what you got. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Read. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, mm -hmm. which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem is our motherland. That's the best place of Adam and Eve. Okay, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where the, the, the Jerusalem, guess what? That's where the Garden of Eden is. The Garden of Eden is. The Garden of Eden sitting in the heart of Jerusalem. Understand that. Watch this. Give me that in Ezekiel 36, verse 35. Okay. The Garden of Eden is sitting in the heart of Jerusalem. Watch this. Ezekiel 36, 35. Read what you got. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 36. Verse 35. 
Read. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. You see that thing? This land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. Ezekiel is letting you know in the spirit where the garden of Eden is. In the land of Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all. Read again. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 35. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. That's when we're going to go back into the land, when the land is going to be in his glory, because we will be in our glory. Okay, so go back to Genesis 2 verse 10. Because the white man, they read the book. They read our book. They know where the best gold is sitting at. They know what's sitting on this continent because it's written in the Bible. That's how they knew that this is the place right here. That's why they came here. Read that again. Genesis 2 verse 10. Read it. Genesis chapter 2 verse 10. You know what? Mm, hold this. Give me Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel 20 verse 6. Okay? Because I want to show you something about this place. I want to show you something about this continent that the white man knows. Watch this. Ezekiel 20 verse 6. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 6. Come on. In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring mm. them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had despised for them, flowing with milk, and milk, which is the glory of all lands. Which is the what? Which is the glory of all lands. So guess what? Jerusalem is the glory of all lands. Why is it the glory of all lands? Because the most said God, that's the land he chose. You understand? That's, the, that's his favorite land. Okay, that's the that's his favorite piece of real estate on earth, Jerusalem. Read again. Ezekiel chapter twenty verse six. Come on. In the day that I lifted up my hand unto them, to bring mm -hmm. them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing, Read. which is the glory of all lands. So Jerusalem, it says, is the glory of all lands on earth. That's the best land on earth. You understand? Watch this. Where's Jerusalem? Jerusalem is on the continent of Africa, northeast. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 7. I want to show you something about this land. You understand? Watch this. Hmm. You know, Deuteronomy. I'm jumping ahead. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, go back to Genesis 2. Go back to Genesis 2. We're going to go back to Deuteronomy 8, okay? Genesis 2, watch this. We know that the Garden of Eden is in the heart of Jerusalem. Watch this. Genesis 2, verse 10. Let me slow down a little bit, okay? Read that. Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. Come on. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden. Mm -hmm. And Read. from thence it was parted and became into four heads. So you have this river that came out of Eden. Eden is in the heart of Jerusalem, which is the what? The mother of us all. That's where Aram, Aram, Aram and Eve was. Okay? So now it says there's a river that went out of Eden. Give me that in Joshua chapter 3, verse 15. Let's see what river, what river is he making reference to. He says there's a river, okay, that came out of the Garden of Eden and, and, and watered the garden, okay? And from thence it parted and became into four heads. Okay, read that. Joshua 3, 15. Come on. Joshua chapter 3, verse 15. Go ahead. And as they that bear the ark will come unto Jordan, and the mm. feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. For read. Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. Read again. Joshua chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. For Wait. Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. He says, Jordan, watch this. Hmm. Give me, give me the book of Genesis 15. Okay, give me Genesis 15 verse 18. Read that. Genesis chapter 15 verse 18. In the same day, 
the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. That river of Egypt right there does the Jordan River that we're reading about in Joshua. The river of Egypt does the Jordan River. Okay, go back to Joshua 3.15 now. Joshua chapter 3 verse 15. Read that. Joshua chapter 3 verse 15. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priest that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. He says, Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest, because the Jordan River is that river that parted into four heads. Okay, jump up to verse 13. Watch this. Joshua chapter 3, That's verse the river 13. of Egypt right there. Come on. Joshua chapter 3, verse 13. And it shall come Wait. to pass. As soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand mm. upon in heap. They shall stand upon in heap. Okay, this during the time of Joshua. Come on, read. And it came to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. Right. And as they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. So he says, because Jordan overfloweth all his banks, that's the key right there, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. Watch this. Go back to Genesis 2 now. Genesis 2. Let's put the pieces together. Genesis chapter 2, read verse 10 again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. And the mm -hmm. river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. So this river, this river that went out of Eden to water the garden, it says, from thence it was parted and became into four heads, because Jordan overfloweth all his banks during the time of harvest. Watch this. Next verse. Come on. The name of the first was Pison. That is mm -hmm. which compasses the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. Where there is what? Where there is gold. So Pison, that's the white knife. Pison is the white knife. You can just Google it. Python is the white knife. So guess what? It says where there is gold. Okay? Where there is gold. Keep reading. And the gold of that land is good. There is bedillium and the onyx stone. Read that again. Verse 12. Genesis chapter 2 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And the gold of that land is good. There is bedillium and the onyx stone. It says the gold of that land, the land of Havila, it says is good. There's bedellium and the onyx stone. So now what you're looking at is, what you're reading here is telling you where the, where the best gold is going to be found. You understand? It's, letting, it's giving you the map. That's why the white man cannot leave this place. Okay? Because he knows where the gold is, where the minerals is, where the best minerals are. Remember it says it is the glory of all lands. From Jerusalem all the way down deeper into the continent of Africa. How does he know to go deeper? Remember, 1948, where are they at? They are in, they put bastards in our land, okay? Before that, the Berlin Conference, hmm, let me step back a little bit. But you notice when you read the scriptures, right? Let me just put it like this. When you read the scriptures, when there was a famine, where did the Lord send us? In Egypt. You understand? When there was a famine always, the Lord said, no, no, go down to Egypt. Go down to Egypt and so forth. Okay? Whenever everybody was lacking, you will always find food on the continent. Why? Because there's minerals here. You understand? So the white man knows that. He understands that. That's why he's here. Okay? You don't want to leave. Watch this. Let me share my screen so you can see. Okay? Now, read 10 and 11 together. Come on. 
Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from mm -hmm. thence it was parted and became into four heads. It became into four first, heads, Biron. The name of the first is Pison. Mm -hmm. That is it which compasses the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. Right. And the gold of that land is good. There is petilium and the onyx stone. This is Pison. This is Pison right here. You see what Pison empties in? It, pay, it empties into the Persian Gulf. Okay, you've got Pison right there. Eden. They even know where Eden is because guess what? This white man, they read the scriptures. Don't think the white man is, is, is dumb. He's not dumb. Okay, now read the next verse. Come on. And the name of the second river is Gihon. That's Gihon right there. That's the Blue Nile. Okay, come on. The same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. You see that thing right there? Gihon. This is Gihon right here. Okay. You see it's to Kush. That's Ethiopia. Go ahead. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. Mm -hmm. That is it which goeth toward the east of Isaria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Euphrates. Now you've got the Hidekel is the Tigris River. So you've got Tigris right there. Let's get Sarah 24 real quick. Hmm. I didn't want to spend some time there because there's some things I want to get. Okay. Give me Sarah 24. Okay. Sarah 24, verse 25. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 24, verse 25. Okay. He filleth all things with his wisdom as Pison and as Tigris in the time of the new fruits. You see that thing? In the time of harvest, that's why you see that you've got uh, Pison, you've got what? You've got Tigris. Tigris is here again. Keep reading, watch this, come on. He maketh the understanding to abound like Euphrates. That and is Euphrates right there, hold on. So that's the Euphrates right there, okay, read. And as Jordan in the time of the harvest. You see, he's telling you right there, the, the river that is actually watering the, that, that's watering the four rivers that parted into four heads. That's the Jordan River, it's right there. Okay, so let's go back. Go back to Genesis 2, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 14 again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 14. Read. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. Which is the that Tigris is it River. Which goeth toward. So the Hidekel is the Tigris River. Come on. That is it which goeth toward the east of Isaria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the fourth river is Euphrates. But what I'm, I'm just giving you an example. Remember what we read in Ezekiel. It says, Jerusalem, it is the glory of all lands. But guess what? Whenever there was a there was a famine, you understand? We always, the Lord always sent us to go deeper into the continent to find food. And that's exactly what we did. Why? Because there's mineral resources here. Okay? This land is rich and is fatter. And you'll never finish the resources on this continent. That's why the continent of Africa feeds the whole earth. You understand? That's why the nations will never leave here because they know what's sitting underneath. They understand that because they read our book. Give me that in Deuteronomy now, chapter 8, verse 7. Now. Give me that now. Okay, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7. Read. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a mm. land of brooks of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. So the Lord is, is giving us the blueprint. This is the one. This is the land that floweth with milk and honey, the glory of all lands. Read on. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig mm. trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, oil, olive, and honey. Come on. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Stop right thou there. Shalt... Hold on. What did he say? 
a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. It says, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Meaning what? The resources will never be finished on, this, on the continent. They will never be finished. That's what the Lord is telling you right there. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Read. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. Mm -hmm. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. You see that thing? You see, what is, that's what the Lord is telling you what's on the continent. He's letting you know. First and foremost, Jerusalem, our homeland, and deeper into the continent where we are scattered, which is where we are now. But the key is, he's letting you know right there, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones, you understand, are iron, out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. That's why there's a lot of mining companies here. You understand? They are mining gold, they are mining oil, diamonds, timber, so on and so forth. There's a lot of precious metals and stones that are sitting on the ground. You understand? They know about this stuff. That's why they never leave here, because it is the glory of all lands. Jerusalem first and foremost, and deeper into the continent, which is where we are. Now, go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 33. So we understand, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. Come on. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, mm. and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. You see what he's saying? If the reason why we are oppressed and crushed always is because of what? Is because of what? Because of the mineral resources that are sitting here that will never be finished. You understand? A land that will have breath without scarceness. A land that you may dig brass upon it. The stones are made out of brass and so forth. That goes into the gold, the diamond, the platinum. You understand? The precious stones and pearls and so forth. Because they know what's sitting on here. They know what's underneath. You understand? Now watch this. You see that part right there? It says, the fruit of thy land. In order for them to get to the fruit of the land, they have to get access to the land. For them to get access to the land, they need to know what's on it. And that's how what I showed you. This is how they know what's sitting on the land. Because they read the Bible. They understand the blessing that the Lord put upon the sons and daughters of Jacob. Us, the 12 tribes of Israel. The white man knows that. And all these other nations that are working together with him, they know that too. Okay? Watch this. Now give me, go back to 2nd Ezra now. Chapter 16, verse 42. 2nd Ezra 16, 42. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 42. Read. He that occupieth merchandise as he that has no profit by it. Read. And he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. So now, now you understand, it says, he that occupieth merchandise. Who is the he? That's us. Okay, because the white man would know what's sitting under the underground. He would know that. You understand? He that occupieth merchandise we, we occupy merchandise. Where's the merchandise sitting? Underneath, underground, okay? That's why the Oppenheimers now, the Oppenheimers, they, they, they made a law. If you find gold in your house, they own it, it's theirs. You see that? What is that called? That's called greed, okay? That's called covetousness. The Oppenheimers, that's, what, that's, the, that's the law they have. You find gold in your house, any precious mineral, it says belongs to them, okay? Watch this. Now, he that occupy merchandise, let's deal with that merchandise. Go back to Michael 2 verse 2. I want to show you something about that merchandise. Because we occupy the merchandise which is sitting underneath the earth. Okay, watch this. Give me that in Michael 2 verse 2. Go back there. Michael 2 verse 2. Michael chapter 2 verse 2. Come on. And they covered fields mm -hmm. and take them by violence and houses Wait. and take them away. So Come they on. oppress a man and his house, even mm. a man and his heritage. They oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. We just, the, the heritage, yeah, that's the merchandise. The, heri the, the heritage, that's part of the merchandise. What? Because the resources, the minerals, the fruit of the land, that's part of our heritage. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Revelation 18, verse 11. Revelation chapter 18, verse 11. 
great. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. Mm -hmm. For no man buys their merchandise anymore. You see that the key is the merchants. Who's the merchants? The corporations, big business, countries doing trade with other countries, particularly the United States of America. But the reason why America is rich, where, does they, where do they get their riches from? They get them from this continent. America comes to the continent of Africa, they starve us out. They live with our riches, the, the, our heritage that God gave unto us, okay? And these nations, they are working together with this white man, America, Babylon the Great. Read again verse 11. Revelation chapter 18, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. No man buys their merchandise anymore because America is going to be wiped out, okay? So the merchants, they deal with merchandise, okay? Come on. The merchandise of gold. You see that? Silver. That's what we, hold on. That's what we read in uh, Genesis 2 verse 10 now to verse 14. You told me chapter 8 verse 7? Yes. That's what this is going into because they know, they read our book, they know where, where the best stuff is because that's our heritage. That's part of our heritage. Come on. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious mm -hmm. stones. Really? And of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. You see what, remember it says the stones are made of brass. That's what we read in Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse seven down, right? And cinnamon and orders and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine mm. flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. And chariots and slaves and souls of men. So guess what? These were the merchants in verse 11. They deal with merchandise in verse 12, including slaves and souls of men, meaning the minds of the people. So guess what? That's a proper thief. The thief comes to your house. Guess what? The white man, the way he steals, he steals the land. You understand? They steal the whole continent. They divide the continent up to divide us so we hate each other. Okay? And not only that, they steal the resources upon the land after they made the divisions. Then what do they do? They enslave the people. After they enslave the people, guess what? They also have to do what? They also have to enslave the minds of the people, how the people think. So they have to have full control of the people, the lands that, and their resources and the, and the lands that they own, their houses too. You understand? So they control everything about that person's life, including their minds, the way they think. That's why he says slaves and souls of men. You understand? Read. And the fruits that thy soul lasted after are departed from thee. Mm -hmm. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou Come shalt on. find them no more at all. Because who will have them? They will be in our enemy's hands. Mainly the main thief on this earth, the white man. Go ahead. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Because guess what? America is going to be destroyed. They are going to be weeping and wailing because no longer will they do business with her because they will be made rich through what? Through all the, 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 the gold, the diamond, the precious metals and so forth. The merchandise that America has stolen from this continent and everywhere else he goes but mainly from this continent, because this is the richest continent on earth. You understand? That's why the white man does not live here. You understand? He leaves the, leave the people in an impoverished estate. That's why we're poor. And guess what? He make you work for your own merchandise and he sell that merchandise to you. And he pays you peanuts. And you take that money, you go back to him because he controls everything. He controls trade, he controls business, he controls access to food and water, housing, jobs, clothing, everything. Even the way you think he controls that too. You understand? That's the thief. That's the type of thief that the white man is. You understand? Watch this. Now, give me the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 46. 2nd Ezra 16, verse 46. I'm, re I'm going over this so you can understand 
how the Lord is going to bring forth vengeance, which the Lord is commanding us, pray for vengeance. Because of these things that I'm showing you is the things that these nations are doing, particularly the main thief on this earth, which is the white man. We what you got. And the, all the other nations, they are accomplice. You understand? You understand? They are guilty by association because they are dealing with him. Okay? And they are in agreement with him. Okay? Read. Second Ezra 16 verse 46. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 46. Read. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil you see that their who's the, Hold on. Who's the stranger? The white man is the stranger. They are the alien. They are the real alien on this earth. It says, for strangers shall reap their fruits. You understand? Who are the strangers? The white man and all his European allies. They are the strangers. He says, they're going to reap our fruits. They're going to take our houses, our lands, and our fruits, our resources by violence. Okay, come on. Overthrow their houses. No, 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 no. And spoil their what? Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 46. Come on. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil mm. their goods. And spoil their goods. So the stuff that we have, the white man will come and spoil it. They took everything of ours. That's why it says he oppressed a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Okay, come on. Overthrow their houses and take their children captives. For in mm. captivity and famine shall they get children. Now we are in slavery, enslaved by these strangers that took our fruits from us by violence. You understand? They spoil our goods. They overthrew our houses. They kicked us out of our houses and took our children captives. Now it says, because in captivity and famine, now you are enslaved and you are poor. He says, that's why we're going to be get children. That's what you are seeing right now. We just, we keep multiplying. Why? Because we stressed out. You understand? Your black man is stressed out. You like to have sex. That's why we are so many upon the land. You understand? He says, in captivity and in famine, we shall beget our children. Read on. Come on. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery. You see that thing? So how did the, the Lord is telling you how the white man got access to all the riches he's got through robbery because he's a thief. Read. The more they deck their cities, they their decorate houses. their cities. They, so they, 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 they rob us they rob us of our merchandise that we read in Revelation 18, verse 12 down. Okay. They rob us of our merchandise. And they took that, they take our merchandise, they decorate their cities with that merchandise. The gold, the diamond, the platinum. You understand? Europe don't make no gold. Europe has they have no natural resources. They that's why it's called a bottomless pit. They have no resources in Europe. Where do they get in them from? Where does the Queen of England have all those gold bars? Where do they get them from? They get them from here. The continent, South Africa, okay? Because we produce one of the largest goals here on earth, okay? Come on. The more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons. And their own persons. That's why they be wearing gold. They be wearing bracelets. They be wearing diamond rings and so forth. Crowns full of gold and diamonds and so pearls. Where do they get them from? The continent. Okay, read. The more will I be angry with them for they are sin, saith the Lord. Now, that's the part we want to deal with. Read that part again. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 48. Come on. The more will I be angry with them for they are sin, saith the Lord. So the Lord says he's angry with the, with the white man. What is the sin? Covetousness. That's their sin. Covetousness, they covet our lands, our resources, they covered the people too. That's why they enslaved us. Now, not only that, they covered our minds too. They enslaved our minds too. Hmm? So he doesn't just steal. Listen, he steal everything. Okay, watch this. Now, hmm. let's go to this article, okay? Let's go to this article real quick. Yes, that's it right there. That's it right there. Let me share my screen real quick. Hold on. Was I sharing my screen the whole time? Mm. Yes, sir. Oh, praises. 
Okay, now I need you to read that. The Scramble for Africa, that's the Guardian. Okay, read that. Scramble for Africa. As the industrial powers race to extract the continent's natural resources to feed their own consumption, mm. they are fostering environmental degradation, corruption, and human rights abuses. Mm. So, Mandy, so watch this, hold on. So this, the objective of the scramble was what? It, it says what? To extract the continent's natural resources to feed their own consumption, meaning to feed their own people. You understand? To make themselves rich. It says they are fostering environmental degradation. What does that mean? Because when they be digging in the earth to get the gold, the diamonds, the oil, they are, they are, guess what? They leave the, those countries that they rob them of our resources in a what? In a, de, in a decayed estate. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. It says corruption and human rights abuses. Because in order for them to do this, they have to leave the, the country in, a, in an impoverished state. Watch this. Hmm. Give me the book. Give me the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. Give me Habakkuk 2. Okay. Habakkuk chapter 2. Because our forefather, the prophet Habakkuk, he made mention of this thing. Watch this. Habakkuk chapter 2, start of verse 4. Read that. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Come on. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, mm -hmm. but the just shall live by his faith. You see what the Bible is saying about the white man? It says, behold, his soul which is lifted up in him is not upright in him. Okay. He's going to tell you. Read verse 5. Come on. Yea, also, because he transgresses by wine, is he this is a white proud man, man. Hold on. This white man, he trans he sins by lies, philosophies, policies. Okay? He transgresses by wine. Read. He is a proud man. Mm. Neither keepeth at home who enlarges his desire as hell. Come on. And is as death and cannot be satisfied. But gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. You see what the Bible is saying? Is as he transgresseth by wine. Get that in Micah 2, verse 11, real quick. So we see what the wine is. This is this white man, he transgresses by wine, by lies. Okay? Read Micah 2, verse 11. Come on. Micah chapter 2, verse 11. Read. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of, and of strong drink, mm -hmm. he shall even be the prophet of these people. So now he's become a prophet of the people that he conquers. You understand? They see him as a sage. Why? Because he says what? He says he comes with the spirit of falsehood and lies. And he says, I will prophesy unto thee of wine, which goes into the falsehood, and a strong drink because our people, they, he leaves the people what? He leaves the people, he puts spells on the people. That's what he does. What is the spell? Democracy and religion. That's what he leaves behind, okay? He shall even be the prophet of these people. Now let's go back. Habakkuk 2, verse 5 again. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 5. Come on. Yea, also, because he transgresses by wine, he mm -hmm. is a proud man. He, trans Hold on. he transgressed by lies and he's a proud man because he hates the Bible. He hates the laws that are written. This, That's why he's breaking these laws. He's covetous because he's got a covetous spirit. Okay, come on. Because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home. They are in everybody's land. They are in everybody's land. Policing the people in those lands and dictating to them what they can and cannot do, where they can fly their planes or not. So he dictates, he's a dictator. When he comes through, he controls everything. Even how they do business in their own country, he's gonna, he's gonna have a hand in it. You understand? He controls trade and so forth of these other countries. So that's why it says, neither keep it at home. And when he's not in his own home, wait, what is he doing? What does he do? Come on, who does what? Who enlarges his desire as hell. 
he enlarges his desire as hell. So he leaves the people in a hellish state. He leaves the people in, in an impoverished state, in captivity. That's, the, that's, the, that's what the hell is going into. And is as what? And is as death. And is as death. So he leaves the country in, a, in, a, in an improper state. That's why he says environmental degradation, because what does the white man go to all these countries? He's looking for what? He's looking for treasure. Their resources, their riches. That's why it says he in, in, enlarges his desire, meaning his spirit of covetousness will be enlarged. And when he leaves those places, he will leave them in a hellish state and is as death. And he kills the people. He kills the land that he, he takes the, the resources from. He kills the people also. You understand? And cannot be satisfied. Meaning he's greedy. That's what the Lord is telling you. And he doesn't care who he destroys when he does it. Give me that in Revelation 6 and 5. Revelation chapter 6 verse 5. Come on. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. The black he horse, the black horse makes reference to us, the dark nations. The black horse is referencing us, the dark nations. We are the black horse. Go ahead. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. So now you've got this white man that is sitting upon these dark nations. You meaning what? He's conquered them. He colonized them. You understand? He implemented the system of what? Colonization, imperialism. You understand? That's what that, th those are the systems that are capitalism. That's what he implements when he arrives there. Okay? And he, had, he says, he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his head. What are these pair of balances? Keep reading. Go ahead. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures mm -hmm. of barley for a penny. And see thou had not the oil and the wine. You see what he's saying? It says, a, it says you see, these are the four pieces, a measure of wheat for a penny, okay? And three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou had not the oil and the wine. So what is this white man doing? He is controlling the, the way in which the, the, the countries do business. So because he'll come through, he'll come through and say, because this system right here is called the Bretton Woods system. The Bretton Woods system is when European nations and America, they decided how they are going to value the currencies of other nations. You understand? Based on what? Based on the value that is attached to them. Because they don't have no value. They don't, they have, because they don't have no gold. They don't have no real natural resources. So they cannot attach value to their currency. So what do they do? They decide, mm, you know what? We are the superpower. We're going to dictate how much your, your rent is, is worth. But our rent, what makes our rent to be worth is because of the resources, the gold that is attached to it. They say, no, we're going to decide how much it's worth and you don't have a say. But guess what? They boost their dollar. The dollar is high. The pound, you understand that? So that's what we're reading. The black horse, that's us. But there's, there's this white man is sitting upon us and he's dictating how we do trade. That's what verse six is going into. You understand? See, thou had not the oil and the wine. Food shortages. That's why countries that he leaves there, he leaves them in a hellish state. Because what is he doing? He's greed. He's ripping the resources and leaving the countries in a destroyed and hellish state. That's what we're reading here, okay? Watch this. Now, keep reading. Now, go back to the article. Okay, I just wanted to explain that. Now, we're going to read through the article. We're going to go through it quick. You can read the article on your own, okay? Read that. Towards the end of last year, read that. Towards the end of last year, at Cape Town, Swanky, Victoria, and Alfred Waterfront, businessmen and African politicians networked and closed deals. They were attending Africa really? Oil Week, a key annual event that attracts the energy sector's biggest players, such as Azon Mobil, Shell, and Chevron. Mm. One candidly named conference session, the Scrabble for Africa, you suggested. 
So the scramble, the scramble for Africa didn't end during the time of Bismarck. No, it continued. Okay, Ray. The scramble for Africa suggested the motives of those attending to profit from the continent's wealth of natural resources. The reason why the, the, the white men cannot leave this place is because of what is that they, what they want to profit from the continent's wealth of natural resources. Okay, that's why they are here. That's what we read in Genesis 2 verse 10 now. Yes, keep going. With oil, gas, timber, diamonds, gold, cotton, and bauxite. And bauxite. Bauxite. And bauxite. bauxite. You find that in the Congo. Coltane, you also find that in the Congo. Okay, diamonds, gold. Okay, we can find them here in South Africa. Go ahead. Coltan and bauxite. Africa is home to some of the largest deposits of natural resources in the world. You see that? Revenues, revenues from their extraction should provide funds for badly needed development, mm. but instead have fueled state corruption, environmental degradation, poverty, and violence. That's what we read in Micah 2, verse 2. Come on. Rather than being a blessing, Africa's natural resources have largely been a curse. A curse to who? The people on the land. Because we're not profiting by it. Go back to 2nd Ezra 16. I'm going to show you that. 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 42 again. Okay, because we just read that. He says, Africa's natural resources have largely been a curse. Watch this. Read that. 2nd Ezra 16, verse 42. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 42. Mm -hmm. He that occupieth merchandise as he that has no profit by it. And he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. So now we occupy merchandise, but we don't get no profit by those that merchandise. We don't. And we're reading the initial resources here. This is the merchandise of gold that we read about in Revelation 18. Yes. He's talking about that, but we're not profiting by it. Okay, come on. The 19th century. The 19th century scramble for Africa saw the great powers rush to control land so they could exploit natural resources. You see that thing? That's the whole point of the scramble for Africa was so that they can exploit natural resources. Go ahead. Today, there is a new scramble for Africa taking place. Mm. And the continent has again become a vital arena of strategic and geopolitical competition between the US, France, Britain, China, and India. You see that? That's the reason why you see the United States will not leave here. France, Britain, China is the new player now, and India. Because India was a bit quiet. Now they are making noise now. Why are they here? Because of the resources that are sitting upon this land. So you've got Babylon the Great, you've got France, which is part of the beast, you've got Britain, which is part of the beast, then you've got China, then you've got India, you've got Moab, you've got Persia, you've got Elam, all of which they are not part of the 12 tribes of Israel. What are they doing? They are reaping the resources from the continent because they read our book. You understand? And the, the way they confuse our so-called leaders Ramaphosa and so forth, they say, no, we want, we want to invest in your country. We want to bring, we want to revolutionize your country. We want to uplift the economic status of your country. But they are not doing that. How long have they been there? They, have they been here? They've been here for more than 500 years. Guess what they're still doing? They are still reaping the resources and the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. That's what's going on now. Okay, come on. The the key question for many is, will the exploitation of Africa's rich resources benefit anyone other than the continent's elites? You see that? The only reason why they're gonna benefit the continent's elites and the continent's elites don't think about our, our black brothers because they're just getting peanuts. The people, that are, the, the people that, are, that are making money, they are profiting off of this is the white man. U US, France, Britain, China, India. They are the ones that are benefiting from this. And I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 23. I mean, Daniel 11, 23. Give me that. Daniel chapter 11, verse 23. Mm -hmm. 
and after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. You see, the For league shall... is the league. Of, the league is the league of nation. You understand? The league. The league goes into the Berlin Conference. The league goes in goes into the Berlin Conference. It says after the league made with that's the Berlin Conference of eighteen eighty four, the nineteenth century. Okay, come on. For he shall come up, and shall become strong with the small people. Because they are minority, we the majority. But guess what? He says they is going to become strong with the small people because they came with guns and blazing. And guess what? We was weak. Why? Because we broke the commandments. Okay, come on. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the province. And he shall peaceably do that which... Because they came with Bible. Hold on. Wait. He says he shall enter peaceably upon the fattest places of the provinces. Because how did they... When they arrived, they, they sent missionaries in. They brought Christianity and white Jesus. And they used our Bible against us. You understand? And they gave us white Jesus and the cross. You understand? That's why it says she'll enter peaceably even upon the fastest places of the world. What is the fastest, the fattest places on earth? The continent of Africa. Go ahead. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done. Mm -hmm. Nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil the riches. Mm. Yea. And he shall focus his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. Because the most High God has given this white man time to rule. But right now we are waking up. The white man's kingdom is coming to an end. Jump down to verse 27. Daniel chapter 11, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And both these king's hearts shall be to do mischief. Mm. And they shall speak lies at one table. That's the Berlin conference. They shall speak lies at one table. That's the Berlin conference right there. Go ahead. But it shall not prosper. For yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Because this time will be at the time appointed. Which time? When Jacob is waking up in these last days, that's the time appointed for the white man's kingdom to be wiped out. Go ahead. Then shall he return into his land with great riches. You see that? Heart... Right Hold on. Wait. It says, then shall he return into his land with great riches. So guess what? The, the so-called the continent of Africa's elites is not talking about um, your our, our Israelite brothers that are that are that are millionaires. No, that's nothing. Those are that's peanuts. Okay. Those are just crumbs that have fallen from the master's table. The Lord is telling you, says, then shall he return into his land with great this white man will return back to his, his country. That's going back one, Russia, okay? That goes into Europe, America. They're gonna go back to Europe, America, Russia, okay? With great riches, France, the Netherlands. Look at the, Nether the Netherlands. You've got the, the Dukes and the Duchess over there. They don't produce no gold. They don't produce no natural resources. That's the bottomless pit. So where are they getting all these riches from? They are getting from this continent, robbing us of our resources, enslaving the people upon the land. So that's why he's telling you right there. Then shall he return unto his land with great riches. The reason why I'm, I'm stressing this is because a lot of the times you hear when, when our, our, the, our brothers that are activists in the world and so forth, politics and all, they'll be talking about this stuff, right? And the way the white man will shut down the argument is that, no, but you've got, um, but you're looking, Mushalozi, you took 200 million, whatever the case may be. It says, um, no, Tokyo Sehwale, hey, he's got money. Petris Mutipe, no, 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 no. They have nothing. Those, what they have is just peanuts. And they like to shut down their argument by bringing those brothers up. But the Lord is telling you right here is that this white man, will return into his land with great riches. And he's going to leave the people in an impoverished state. Our blood brothers are not doing that with the peanuts they got. You understand? Read again, verse 28. Daniel chapter 11, verse 28. Read. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. Uh-huh. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. 
You see, you see what he's saying? He says, he shall, shall be against the holy covenant because what does the covenant say? The Lord, one of the, one of the laws in the covenant is that thou shalt not covet your neighbor's anything. Don't covet. Don't take your neighbor's landmark. Guess what? The white man did that. He violated all the laws that are in this book just so that he can satisfy his greed. It says he shall do exploits and return to his own land. The black man is not doing that. Don't talk to me about um, uh, the so-called millionaires of Africa and all that. That don't mean nothing. That's, those are just, that's pocket change. You understand? That's pocket change because if there was rich, according to the scriptures, you know what we would? We would have our own currency and we would control it. But they don't have that power to do it. The white men still tell them how, mu how much worth is their dollar, how, how worth is their currency. So they don't have no power. You need to understand that. So whenever that argument comes down, you must shut it down with this verse right here. Now watch this. Mm. Yes, read that. Oil is perhaps the most important. Read that. Oil is perhaps the most important lure with competition between foreign states and companies to secure resources. So intense, it attracts more than 50% of all foreign direct investment. Mm, you see that? It attracts more than, excuse me, 50% of all foreign direct investments. Now I want to show you something. Jump down to verse, not verse. Um, read verse, read, read, read this last paragraph, this paragraph right here. Read that. First, there is the U.S. You know what? You know what? Hmm. You know what? Let's just read. Read, read that. Um, read according to, you can read the whole article on your own because I still have a lot to cover. Come on. According to the U.N., World Investment Report, FDI inflows were concentrated in a few industries, notably oil, gas, and mining. Mm -hmm. And six oil-producing countries, Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Equatorial Guinea, Nigeria, and Sudan, hogged around 48% of the continent's investment inflows. So who's investing? You see that? Now, that's a big question right there. So Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Equatorial Guinea, Nigeria, Sudan. You understand? Because when you look at how impoverished these countries are, they are impoverished. Yeah, they say you got rich blacks here and there, but the majority, they are starving. So the question is, so who's investing? Keep reading. First, there is the US. Hold on, you see that? He's the main one. America is the main culprit behind all these investment inflows into the continent, particularly these countries that have what? That have oil. 48% of the continent's investment because what? There's a lot of oil here. Okay, come on. It is interested in the region as a cheap and reliable alternative to the increasingly volatile Persian Gulf. So now the reason why they come here is because they want to get it cheap. Okay, read. West Africa already supplies about 12% of U.S. crude oil imports, and America's National Intelligence Council predicts that this share will rise to 25% by 2015. Now we are in 2021, so that means the numbers are higher even more. But what I'm going to show you here is that America is the one that is making all these investments. And guess what? And the reason why... America is doing that because America dictates how worth your currency is. They dictate the value of your currency. You understand? So now imagine all these countries that we just mentioned, Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Guinea, Nigeria, Sudan. I mean, their currency is garbage compared to the dollar. So obviously, they are getting it cheap. You understand? They are getting it cheap. You understand? And they leave the country in an impoverished state. Okay? Now watch this. We're just going to read the first paragraph here. Military bases. Military bases. As is often the case with oil, military mm. involvement follows closely behind trade. Mm. And in February this year, the U.S. set up an African command, AFRICOM. It has Why a step. Would America do this? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. It says in February this year, the U.S. set up an African, uh, Africa command. That's a military Africa. What are they doing? They are monitoring, they are making sure that, Leo, wait a minute, 
we better, you better make sure that this, all that you are mining and all that, it comes to us. And they are, their military basis is there to make sure that there's civil unrest in the country. And America becomes what? The heroes. That's why this, that's what the, these movies are about, the Avengers. The Avengers are not superheroes. Those are the villains of the story, okay? America, just like America, <clears throat> excuse me. America is, is acting like the, the hero, but they are the villains. Okay, Ray. It has established bases in and signed access agreements with Senegal, Mali, Ghana, Gabon, and Namibia. Because there's resources over there. Go ahead. Africa is becoming strategically important to the U.S. because of its oil production and China's increasing influence in the region. So now America, guess what America is? Because remember, China works hand in hand with America. They have trade deals. They have trade agreements. So the reason why China is here, they make it seem like America and China don't get along. No, they do get along with certain things. Because it says Africa is becoming strategically important to the US because of its oil production and China's increasing influence in the region. They are all working together. Watch this. You see this part right there? The US, it says what? We are becoming more important to the US because of oil production. Hmm. Go back to Revelation 6, read verse 5 now. No, read verse 6. Revelation 6 and 6. Okay. So you brothers that are going to be going over the 2028 and so forth, you better take good notes. Okay, read what you got. Revelation 6 verse 6. Read that. Revelation chapter 6 verse 6. Come on. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou had not the oil and the wine. You see that thing? And see thou had not the oil, the oil, the oil, and the wine. You don't have the oil. Why? Because they know there's a lot of oil here. America is, I mean, Nigeria is the leading in the, on the continent in terms of oil. And the Middle East as well. You understand? Because when you read Genesis 14, you understand when our forefather Abraham went to wage war, with those five um, Hamite, um, Hamite kings. He says they what? The land was full of slime pits. That's petroleum, oil. You understand? That's why America is not going to leave this continent. Why? Because of the oil. You see that thing? Now, let me see now. Okay, let's go to... Okay, give me Micah. Give me Micah chapter 2, verse 4. Okay, Micah 2, verse 4. Micah chapter 2, verse 4. Mm -hmm. In that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say, We be utterly spoiled. You know what? Start at verse 3. Micah 2, verse 3. Start of verse 2, we're going to read down. Micah 2, verse 2, all the way to verse 4. Read that. Micah chapter 2, verse 2. Come on. And they covered fields and take them mm -hmm. by violence. Rain. And houses and take them away. Come on. So they oppress a man and his house, even mm. a man and his heritage. That's why it says, who's benefiting from this? Who's benefiting? It's obviously, it's not us, the Israel. We're not benefiting from these resources. Okay, come on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, against this family do I devise an evil. You see from which... Again, hold on, wait, wait, wait. It says, behold, against this family do I devise an evil. Go ahead. From which ye shall not remove your necks. Because the most high God allowed these nations to do this to us. That's why it says, from which... From it says, from which he shall not remove your necks. Was still under what was our necks are still under persecution under the foot of the white man. You understand? But the Lord says, the more they do this, the more I'll be angry with them. The Lord says he's gonna judge them for what they're meaning, vengeance is coming for what they are doing to us. Okay, come on. Neither shall he go haughtily, for this time is evil. Because we are living in an evil time. And the main evil, the reason why there's evil upon this earth is because the white man is ruling the earth. Okay, read. In that day shall one take up a parable against you 
and lament with a doleful lamentation mm. and say, we be utterly spoiled. He has changed the portion of my people. How has he removed because they it stole our me? land. Hold on. He says, he changed the portion of my people. He stole our land, our resources, our heritage, changed our names, kicked us out of our houses, enslaved our sons and daughters, enslaved our mothers and fathers, and lived our countries in a, in a, in a impoverished state. The condition of the people, we are impoverished, but he keeps ripping the resources of the land with robbery and deceit and violence. Okay, come on. How has he removed it from me? Turning away, he has divided our fields. You see what this white man did? When he turned away, when he went back with great riches, having done exploits of the resources upon the land, he says what? He divided our fields. Why is this turning away? When he went back to going back to his land, he made sure that he divided our field. Why would he do that? Because he's making sure that even when he's over there in his own land, guess what he's doing? That's not even his land. He's stolen land. America is stolen land from the Native American Indians, the tribe of Gad. But the point is, in order for him to make sure that we don't revolt, Guess what he had to do? He had to make sure that when he goes back, we are divided. So that's why he will be comfortable going back and returning back and going back again because he knows that when he leaves us, we are still divided. So we're not going to come together to say, no, 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 go back where you come from. He knows we're not going to do that because it's written right here. You understand? Watch this. So this white man, he took our land. How did he know? Because he read the book, he knows where the resources are. And he took the resources from us and the people as well. He enslaved the people. How did he do that to make sure that we don't come together? He divided us. He divided our fields, you understand? After he divided our fields, what did he do? He divided our minds too, because he took over the way we think. Okay, watch this. Give me, let's go to, um, let's go to this next article, okay? I'm going to move it fast now. Okay. Give me. Let me see if I want to go there. Mm. You know what? Mm. Give me the book. Give me the book of Deuteronomy. Okay. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Give me Deuteronomy 28 verse 48. You know what? Give me Revelation 18. I think there's something I want out of that. Revelation chapter 18. Let's go to Revelation 18 real quick. Okay. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 18, verse 13. Read that. Revelation chapter 18, verse 13. Come on. And cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. And slaves and souls of men. Slaves and souls of men. Now I'm going to deal with the slaves now. You told me to need verse 48. Watch this. Okay. It's the slaves and souls of men. Not only did they deal with the, the resources upon the land. You understand? Not only did they deal with the resources in terms of what? In terms of mineral resources. No, no, no. And the main resources that could not finish is what? The people. Us. Our sons and daughters, fathers and mothers. Okay, Deuteronomy 28, verse 48, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, mm -hmm. in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So now that's captivity, that's slavery. He says, this white man... He's going to make, we, what, we will serve him in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he's going to put yokes of iron upon our necks until the chains are no longer necessary. Because he says, slaves and souls of men. Once he enslaves us to condition us, he's going to remove the chains off because he knows the conditioning is in the mind now. That's why it says, slaves and souls of men. I hope you men can see that thing. Watch this. Now, let me share this article, okay? Hmm. Let me share this article real quick. Okay, this, the, the, this, this, these are our brothers and sisters in Namibia. Okay, the Hereros. Watch this. 
Now, read that. Herero and Nama genocide because the Germans did this thing. Okay. Herero and Nama genocide. Mm -hmm. Between 1904 to 1907, German military forces called Schutztrupp committed a genocide against indigenous people in their colony of German Southwest Africa, present day Namibia, hereafter GSWA. The intent really? of these killings, which occurred through battle, through starvation and thirst in the Omaheke desert, and through forced labor, malnutrition, sexual violence, medical experiments, and mm. disease in concentration camps. You see that? Come on. Was to rid the colony of people viewed as expandable and thus gain access to their land. You see, the, the, the center of all this whole demonic abominable stuff that they were doing, the killings, you understand, through starvation, okay, thirst. Remember it says, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, we're going to serve this white man. That's what he did. And he used those things to kill and destroy our people in Namibia. Okay? It's in the Omaheke Desert. Through forced labor, malnutrition, sexual violence. So they were raping our, our, our daughters, our mothers. Medical experiments. That's the reason why now they are so, they are, they are, they are, they, the medical advance, the medical medicine has advanced so much. What were they doing? Medical apartheid. That's what they were conducting experiments how did this white man how does this white man know how the womb of a woman sitting how does he know how does he know how the brain looks on the inside this is gray matter this is white matter how does he know that because the white man they would experiment on our sons and daughters and they would skin them alive they will make sure that they cut their heads off they open their heads up they open they open their heads to see the brain while they're still alive to see how they react they were conducting these medical experiments with our people while they were still alive. I need you men to understand this thing. Sisters okay. too, okay? That's why, they are, that's why they are so good in medicine. How do they know how to know how to draw the structure of a womb? How do they know? How do they know how to draw the structure of, 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 a, of a woman when they are pregnant? How do they know? On six months, the baby look like this. In three months, the baby look like this. In two months, the baby looked like this. In eight months, the baby, how did they know? Because back then there were no sonars, there were no x-rays. So how did he know? Read that thing again, when it says the intent of these killings, read. The intent of these killings, which occurred through battle, through starvation and thirst in the Omaheke desert and through forced labor, malnutrition, sexual violence, medical experiments, and disease in concentration camps mm -hmm. was to rid the colony of people viewed as expandable and thus gain access to their land. Because guess what? We were expandable. That's what they are saying right there. Thus gain access to their land. That's what they were doing to us, okay, in Namibia, our brothers and sisters over there. Come on, this genocide. This genocide, the first of the 20th century, was a prelude to the Holocaust in both the ideology of racial hierarchy that justified the genocide and in the methods employed. You see that thing, you see that part right there when it says, um, was prelude to the Holocaust in both the ideology of racial hierarchy, meaning what? White supremacy. Ideology of racial hierarchy is white supremacy. That justified the genocide. So the reason why they killed our people in such a gruesome manner is because of what the ideology of racial hierarchy. And is that's how they justified killing our people in a, such a gruesome manner in Namibia and in the methods they employed, meaning the manner in which they destroyed our mothers and fathers over there. Go ahead. Such linkage between the two genocides has been termed the continuity thesis. Mm. Historians estimate that approximately 80,000 indigenous people were killed in the genocide. That's a lie. That's more than that. Okay. The proof of that, give me Daniel 9 verse 11 real quick. That's a lie. It's not 80,000 people. Because we are many. Okay. There's no way that only 80,000 people were killed. That's a lie. Give me that in Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Watch this. Come on. You know what? Verse 12. Let's get to verse 12.
Daniel chapter 9, verse 12. Read. And he has confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. You see what he's saying? By bringing upon us a great evil. It's not just any type of evil. It's a great evil. For under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. So this 80,000, this is nothing. Okay? That's a lie right there. They are just trying to lessen the blow. Oh, no, it's not that bad. Mm -mm, it's more than this. Okay? Come on. While these numbers are difficult to confirm, that this right figure... There. Hold on. No, no, no. Wait, don't just read past that. He says, while these numbers are difficult to confirm, told you, they are difficult to confirm. So they, if they are difficult to confirm, where did they get this number from? If these numbers are difficult to confirm, according to their own words. So they just, they just pull a number out of the air. Because when they say they are difficult to confirm, what are they really saying? It's called dog whistle talk. They are letting you know that, you know what, we don't want to actually put the real numbers up here. They don't want to, they want to just lessen it is not 80, just 80,000. No, difficult to confirm. That means they cannot make the calculations because there's so many people that they killed. They cannot even come with the actual number, but they just decided, no, we just want to choose 80,000. Keep reading. While these numbers are difficult to confirm, this figure represents about 80% of the Herero people and 50% of the Nama people. So 50% of the Herero and 50% of the Nama people, they make up 80,000 people. You cannot make this stuff up. That does not make any sense in terms of basic mathematics here. Okay? Come on. Now, more than 100 years after the genocide, the government of Namibia is seeking reparations from Germany for land stolen and lives lost. Guess what? Reparations, give me Lamentations 417. You see, mm, they think Germany is going to give them reparations. They are not going to do that, those demons over there. Okay? They are not going to do that. Lamentations 417. I'm going to show Lamenta you the two reparations. We're going to read about that in a few, in a few, in a few minutes. Watch this. Lamentations 417. Read that. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 17. Come on. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain health. Read. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. You see that thing? So the Herero and the Nama people, our brothers and sisters over there, because they are Israelites. Okay. They fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Guess what? They are not going to get any reparations from these white demons. They are not going to get it. Why? Because the Lord is telling you right there. He says, well, they are waiting for vain help. They are not going to get it. Okay? We have watched for a nation that could not save us. Because we must pray to the Lord to bring forth vengeance on the white man and all his European allies and all these other heathen nations that are working together with them. That's the true reparations. Okay? To be enslaved and to rule over them forever. That's the true reparations. You understand? Okay. Now, keep reading on the article. A significant portion of the most arable land in Namibia is still owned by descendants of the German settlers. You see that thing? Because the Germans, they're speaking Africans over there because I used to work with them. Keep going. I used to German. work with, I, I work, I, there was a company I worked for and there was a lot of people, they, do, they did business in, in Vendhoek. Okay? They'll keep going, they'll be going over there. And they feel so comfortable when they are over there. You understand? Because white supremacy is so hot over there. Listen, it's obvious. You can cut the tension with a knife. Go ahead. Germany has not formally apologized for the genocide, but is engaged in bilateral discussions as to when and if it will do so. You see that? There are no plans of apologizing. And what is an apology going to do? Apology is not going to bring the, back the land. Apology is not going to bring back the people that they put to death. You understand? The only thing that is going to cleanse is that their blood must be shed by the Lord when he returns. Go ahead. To date, Germany has steadfastly refused to consider payment of reparations. 
That's what we read in Lamentations 417. They are not going to do it. The only one that is going to make them do it is the most High like God. They're going to pay with their lives too. Understand that. That right there is therapy right there. Okay. Now, hmm, I'm not going to go too much into this. You can read the whole thing on your own. Okay. Now watch this. I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a left now. Give me three holy children, verse nine. Give me the three holy children and verse nine. Okay. The three holy children, verse nine. Come on. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, mm. most hateful forsakers of God, and to an unjust king, and the most wicked in all the world. Now that's it right there. This is the white man. Right? This is talking about the white man. Read again, verse nine. The song of the three holy children, verse nine. Mm -hmm. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies. They don't care about the law. They don't care about the laws of God. That's why it says they will go against the holy covenant. He says, thou, he says, thou did deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies. You see that plural? That's the white man and his European allies. That's the Chinese. That's the Japanese. That's the Arabs. Okay. That's the East Indians. He's going into them. But the main one on top of the totem pole is who? The white man. Okay, go ahead. Most hateful forsakers of God. The most hateful forsakers of God. Come on. And to an unjust king. Mm -hmm. And the most wicked in all the world. And the most wicked in all the world. Yeah, these other nations, they are wicked. But there's a main wicked on this earth that is wicked than all of them combined. Who is that? The white man. Can I prove it? You better believe I can do that thing. Give me that in 1st Maccabees 1. Watch this. 1st Maccabees chapter 1, okay, verse 7. We're going to read down. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. So, Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. So Alexander, he ruled for 12 years and he dropped dead. Go ahead. And his servants bear rule everyone in his place. Right. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. You see what happens when the white man took over? It says evils were multiplied in the earth. So what is it letting you know? There was evil in the world, right? But when the white man took over in 336 BC, you understand, guess what? It says evils, they multiplied on this earth. That's why in the three holy children, it says the most wicked of in all the world. Because the white man is the one that multiplied wickedness on this earth more than any other nation on this earth. That's what the Lord is telling you right there. Okay, so when you read the history, they'll be telling you, no, no, civilization started with the Greeks. That's a lie. Because when Alexander took over, who was ruling? The Persians. Persia and Media. You understand? The Persians, which came up last. But the, the, already there was civilization. So what are they talking about when it says civilization came with the Greeks? That's a lie. Evils multiplied on the earth when the Greeks took over. So that's what they are trying to hide with that statement. Okay, watch this. Give me Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 4. Read that. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 4. Read. Therefore, the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceeds. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, therefore, the law is slacked. So in this land, the law is slacked. That's why the says, Germany said they are refusing to pay reparations to the Nama and the Herero in Namibia. They said they're not going to do that. That's why it says, therefore, the law is slacked and judgment does never go forth. Meaning true and just judgment doesn't go forth. Why? For the wicked does compass about the righteous, 
therefore wrong judgment proceeded. You see that? Because the wicked is bearing rule, that's why now the earth is mourning right now because of that. Because just judgment does not go forth. The law works in their favor. When they kill, guess what? They get away with it because the law is was written when we was in slavery to support them and their wickedness and to get away with, with, with wickedness. That's what we're reading here. Why am I bringing this out? Watch this. Hmm. Let me share my screen. Therefore, the law is slept. Okay. Before I share my screen, let me share the sound too. Okay. So we can understand why am I bringing this up? Watch this. Now, I'm going to play this video right now. Okay. He's first joined by the SACP's first Deputy General Secretary, Soli Mapaila. Good evening, Mr. Mapaila. Thanks very much uh, for coming through. You know, in, a, in an inset we've been playing for uh, most of uh, today, we have Wallace's daughter saying, yes, he did what he did, but he's been in jail for nearly 25 years. Why can't you forgive him? Well, it's not... Now, this goes into um, uh, Wanus Walus. The guy that killed Chris Han, okay, he's Polish, so he's a he's Amalek. So the people are saying, I think what the, his daughter is saying, no, he must be forgiven. He's been twenty five years into prison. Listen, you know how many of our brothers and sisters are in jail today for something they did not do, and they got in life imprisonment. Now they want the public to feel sorry for this demon white man who killed. One of our one of our uh, one of our brothers during the 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 you know during the time of apartheid, Chris Hani, you understand? So they want this guy because I think he applied for parole. He applied to be released. He says now he's changed his life. Now he went back to his Catholic roots. That's even worse. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna go over there. A question of forgiveness. It's a question of repentance on his side, uh, being remorseful. And he has not demonstrated that. And it's also a question of uh, defending our right to exist as, as communists, uh, our ideology. Because uh, in his uh, papers, in, the, in fact, uh, it does indicate that whilst uh, in some other papers that he had made, which we also feel that uh, were self-serving papers for the purpose of him uh, getting the parole through the ticket box process, where he does indicate that uh, he's still committed to his ideology of hating communists. Now, we don't want uh, anyone to hate communists, and therefore, if he comes out, he can still reorganize. But in any case, if you look at the court process that sentenced him, sentenced him to death, he should be grateful that through us, our liberation movement, for which uh, Comrade Christian belonged to, we banned the death penalty, and his uh, death sentence was commuted to life imprisonment. And for him in, uh, to, to come out in, an, in a very nefarious manner is completely unacceptable. That is why. We had wanted him to follow a proper process, to engage with the family, to engage with the party, and to be remorseful properly, and he hasn't shown that. Well, his legal representative, I mean, says uh, he has shown remorse for his crime on several occasions and has also apologized to the Hani family for taking their husband and father. That's why I'm saying uh, that point came out much more later, and it was, it was, it was made, made for the purposes of him ticking the box of the parole process, because the parole condition mm. requires mm. the engagement between the victims uh, and, and the offenders. And it is... Mm. That is just white demon Edomite right there. Participate in that particular process. In fact, uh, we had indicated to his lawyer some years ago that uh, at one point when uh, Sis Dimpo was uh, traveling to, to, to Cuba, as she was uh, departing, in fact, she was already on air, he sent us a letter indicating that he wants to engage with her. We indicated to, to him that she has traveled to Cuba. Immediately, he sent us that particular letter. He put that process into the parole application to say he has communicated with the family and the Communist Party. So that we could see it was not a genuine, it was actually self-serving interest because he wanted to meet the deadline for parole application. So his uh, pronouncement through the legal team that is remorseful is completely untrue. He hasn't demonstrated that. And in fact, uh, this only happened even uh, for that matter 
after 20 years and all these many other years, he has been quite repentant that uh, 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 he, he's, he's not, uh, he doesn't see anything wrong that he has done and that actually could repeat it. In any case, he's... he's so for 20 years in prison, he didn't feel any remorse whatsoever for what he did for killing uh, Chris Hunt. So for 20 years, he says he could even repeat it. Now, the last 10 years, because now, I mean, the last is, he's in the last 10, he's 68 years old now. Okay, now he's feeling remorseful. Listen, he don't mean nothing he's saying. Okay, that's it on there. Okay, that's it on there. Watch this. Now, I want to share the, the article that was written. Okay, that was put out. Um, that was put out when? Yesterday, I think. So let's read that. Okay, now this is then. Now this is now. Okay, so this is on Times Life. Okay, read that. Reading from Times Life. From Times Life. I'm on, sorry. Read the, read the topic. Sorry, sir. There was a bit of feedback. Okay, I'm sorry. Title. I'm sorry I killed Honey. I now reject apartheid and have gone back to my Catholic roots, says Janus Walus. So now, you see what he's saying? He says, I now reject apartheid. So the last 20 years, he didn't see nothing wrong with it. In fact, he could repeat it and have gone back to my Catholic roots. Let me tell you something about this Catholic root garbage. The Catholic Church is the reason why today you see white Jesus in the churches. It's because of the Catholic Church. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Roman Catholic Church, they are the ones that were pushing white Jesus from the time of what? The Spanish and Portuguese Inquisition when they, killed, they were kicking us out of Spain and Portugal. You understand? When they were pushing white Jesus on us and when we did not agree, they were killing, they were lynching us Guess what they did to Atawalpa? Atawalpa. Okay, let's see. Let me see if I can pull him up. What they did to Atawalpa. Watch this. Hmm. He went back to his Catholic roots. He was the uh, Atawalpa, just to catch you up, Atawalpa was the king of the Inca Empire. Okay? That's Northern Kingdom. Watch this. Hmm. When he was burning. When the Jesuit priests were burning him. Let me see if I can find pictures of Atawalpa where they were banning him, forcing him. Oh, that's it right there. Yes, that is it right there. Uh, let's see if I can view the image. Uh, it doesn't show there, but let me just view. Let me share my screen so you can see. That's Atawalpa right there. Anybody see my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, that's Atawalpa. You see, he's got fringes and a bar of blue. You see that? Right there. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's a Jew right there. Okay. Look what the Jesuit priests are doing. They are holding the cross. They are forcing him to do what? To bow down to white Jesus. That's a Jesuit priest. You see, now he's going to be burned. He's gonna, they're going to burn him at the stake. Right there. That's what you are seeing here. They're going to set him on fire. Because why? He didn't bow down to white Jesus. Okay, that's what you are seeing right there. You see that? They are setting him on fire because he didn't want to bow down to white Jesus. That's Atawalpa right there. You understand? He was the king of the, of the Inca Empire. This is Northern Kingdom right here. You understand? So when he says he's going back to his Catholic roots, listen. <laughs> he's just talking garbage, okay? Now read that. Read the title again. 
reading for reading from for, Times for, Life. Times Life. I'm sorry I killed honey. I now reject apartheid and have gone back to my Catholic roots, says Yanus Walus. You see that? So this Catholic roots that he's saying is going back to the Catholic priests, the Jesuit priests, they were setting our people on fire when we did not bow down to white Jesus. Okay. So there's no, he's not changing nothing. Okay. Read that. Polish immigrant. Polish immigrant Janusz Walus, who killed anti-apartheid activist Chris Honey, says he has turned over a new leaf, realizes that apartheid was wrong and has grown closer to God during his almost 30 year incarceration. Lie, he's lying, he's lying. Give me that in uh, the book of Psalms. I'm jumping ahead now. Give me the book of Psalms 58 real quick. He's lying, he's not telling the truth. You know what, give me Psalms 52, 55 is 21. Psalms 55 is 21. He's not, listen, he, 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 was, he says he's grown closer to God during his almost 30 year incarceration. Hmm. Read that, Psalms 55 verse 21. Psalms chapter 55 verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, mm -hmm. but war was in his heart. Come on. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. You see that thing? He's coming with Christianity because that's the, that, that, that's the brainchild of what? Of the Roman Catholic Church in these last days. Okay. Now go back to the article. You know what? Mm, no, no. Isaiah 58. No, no. Psalm 58. Okay, Psalm 58 and verse 3. Psalm chapter 58, verse 3. Come on. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Right. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. You see what the Bible is saying? So he's lying. That's what the Bible is saying. He's not telling the truth. He's lying. Now read the next paragraph. These revelations, read. Right? These revelations were listed in papers filed to the Constitutional Court earlier this year when he applied for the Apex Court to look into his last failed bid to get parole in March 2020, which had been denied by Justice Minister Ronald Lamula. All praises to the Mosa. Keep going. Walus wants the Constitutional Court to set aside the Supreme Court of Appeals decision to dismiss his leave to appeal against the high court judgment that upheld the refusal of his parole. So now the Supreme Court refused. Now he's going to the Constitutional Court. Okay, keep going. Walus's legal team shared the papers after last week's affirmation by the Corn Court that it would hear the matter in February 2022. Mm -hmm. Come on. In a lengthy affidavit, in a lengthy affidavit, Walus detailed how since his incarceration in October 2003, he was a reformed man who has over the years tried numerous times to convey his apology to Hani's widow, Limpo, and his children. Limpo, 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 and his children. So he wants to apologize. No, no, he must serve his sentence, okay, for the crime he committed, okay? Go ahead. I have already in the application papers apologized for the crime that I had committed. I have apologized to the Honey family and I have done everything that I could to show remorse and to communicate my apology to the Honey family. So what is apology? What is an apology going to do? Apology is not going to change what he did. Okay. He killed his honey. He must pay for that. Okay. That's just judgment. But he wants to get out of that. He wants to walk away squad free he wants to he wants to he wants his prison sentence to be cut okay why 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 guess what you're gonna see some things that will disturb you okay because i was reading this article there's some things in here that will disturb you watch this mm, read that i have great remorse in respect read that i have great remorse in respect of what i have done I realized today that it was completely unacceptable. So he's only realizing today that what he did. I mean, how do you realize today in 2020, 2020, 2020, 2021, you realize that you, when, when you kill somebody, 
um, that was wrong. You realize how many years later? You realize that that was wrong? You realize how many years later that apartheid was wrong? Come on. Read that. Ever since my incarceration? Ever since my incarceration, I have returned to my Roman Catholic faith, which has helped me fully understand my wrongdoings. So hold on a second. So when he killed Chris Honey, he didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know that what he was doing was wrong. But ever since he returned back to this uh, demonic, abominable uh, church called the Roman Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic of demons, hmm? he says, oh, help me fully to understand his wrongdoings. Hold on. How come they don't take down the white Jesus image? It's still up. So they don't see their wrongdoings. Obviously, the Roman Catholic Church don't teach that. Really? I have accepted the new South Africa. Mm. Its constitution and its constitutional dispensation, Walu said. Lie. Go ahead. He and right-wing politician Clive Debbie Lewis were sentenced to death for murdering honey. The SA Communist Party General Secretary. Hani was shot dead outside his home in Boxbeck on April 10, 1993. So now, guess what? He didn't have a gun to his head when he went to Chris Hani's house. So he went to the man's house. To the man's house, that means the wife is there, the kids are there. So you're going to kill the father in front of their children. Hmm? And you don't see nothing wrong with that. You're only realizing how many years later that that was wrong. You cannot make this stuff up. Keep going. Debbie Lewis and Walu's sentences were later commuted to life imprisonment when SA abolished the death penalty. Come on. Debbie Lewis, who had allegedly ordered the heat carried out by Walu's, was granted medical parole in 2015 and died the following year of cancer. Oh, please. Keep going. The now 68 year old Walu, who is incarcerated at the Hosi Mampuru second correctional facility said his time behind bars had led to him having interactions with black people. You see, that's what they say. Mm, they like to say that a lot. You know, I've got friends with black people. I'm not a racist. Those are the most, those are the most racist ones. It says having interactions with black people. You see that right there? Mm -hmm. Smoother than oil. Mm, that's what we read in Psalm 65 verse 21. Go ahead. This, he said, had given him a better understanding of them. Mm. So he didn't understand black people. Listen, that's a lie. You know how I know that's a lie? Mm. Give me the book of Lamentations 2.14. I'm going to show you how, my, how that's a lie. When he says when he interacted with black people, that's when he understood us. No, 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 no. That's a lie. He's just lying. Lamentations 2.16. You know, start at this 15. He's lying. Okay, he's not telling the truth. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 15. Come on. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. Mm. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? How would they say that if they don't know anything about us? So he's a lie. He's lying. Keep going. Verse 16. Watch this. All thine enemies have opened their mouths against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found mm. and we have seen it. So how did they find? How did they see it? They found it in the records as it is written. And they've seen what happens to us when we are in the midst of sin. And how they're going to be able to use that as an, what? as an opportunity to destroy us. So he's, he's lying when he says, no, he started to, understood, to understand us when he started to interact with black people in jail. He's lying because the Bible don't say that. Okay, come on. I have had lots of interaction with many different persons of different races in prison. And I have come to realize that apartheid was wrong and that mm. all persons are born equal and I reject racism in any form, Walu said. He's a liar. He's saying he's going back to his Roman Catholic roots. Roman Catholic Church push, pushes white supremacy because they are still pushing white Jesus. And all these churches, all these denominations that you see on this earth, 
get, guess what? The mother of them all is the Roman Catholic Church. So he's lying what he's saying. Go ahead. I accept democracy to the extent Hold that on. I accept Wait, it. wait. What did he say? I accept democracy. Hold on. So, I mean, come on now. He accept democracy. Boo hoo. I mean, they, his forefathers, they are the ones that set up democracy during the time of the Greeks in Athens. Democracy, that's the best. Athens, that's the birthplace of democracy. Let me get that. Get that in First Maccabees 1, verse 41, because they might think we're making stuff up. Mm -mm. The, Athens, that's the best, the birthplace of democracy. He says, I accept democracy. Hold on. You accept democracy, but you started democracy. Your forefathers did that. What do you mean you accept democracy? Read that. First Maccabees 1, 41. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. This is crazy. Come on. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Come on. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. You see that thing? Moreover, Anti King Antiochus, which was a Greek, he comes out of the Seleucus Empire, who wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. This is the birth of democracy right here. That everyone should leave his laws so all the heathen agreed according to the commandments of the king. So this was a commandment of the king to, in, to institute democracy. So democracy is a religion of the Greeks. Next verse is going to tell you that. Come on. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion mm -hmm. and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. You see that thing? So our, our, our forefathers, they followed after the religion of the Greeks also. They started to sacrifice and to order idols and to profane the Sabbath. But democracy was a, was a commandment that was given by King Antiochus and is a religion of the Greeks. Okay. Now, read that part. Read that part. I have, I have what? I accept democracy. Read that. I accept democracy to the extent that I accept that a party which was voted for by the majority of the people should govern and that the ANC is the governing party because of that reason, he added. So he's lying on that, but I wanna show you this. This is something that will really turn your stomach. Read this part right here. If I do not succeed with this application, it appears that I will be incarcerated forever, which is an unjust, inhumane, and cruel punishment. You cannot make this stuff up. You, I mean, you cannot make this stuff up. Could, could you read that thing again? Okay, because this is what he's saying on quote. Quoting Yanus Walush, if I do not succeed with this application, it appears that I will be incarcerated forever, which is an unjust, inhumane, and cruel punishment. He's talking crazy. So the things that they've done to us, give me that in 2nd Ezra 16, 48. 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 48. 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 48. Mm -hmm. The more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. So the, the Lord is saying what? Read that again. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 48. The more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. So the Lord says he's going to be, he's angry with the heathens for their sins, particularly the white man. You understand why? Because of all the evils that he's done upon this earth. Get that in second again, the three holy children, verse nine again. Read that. The song of the three holy children, verse 9. Come on. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God, and to mm -hmm. an unjust king, and the most wicked in all the world. So how can he say the punishment which is meat? The punishment is meat. In, in fact, it's not even meat. 
Do you understand? It's not, in, it's not enough for what is done. But the point is, he says he, when he, he is now going back to his Catholic roots, but the Bible is telling you, it says what? It says, thou did deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God, to an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world. He's the one, he's got the nerve to say, because he's going to be incarcerated forever, this punishment is unjust, inhumane, and cruel punishment. What about when he pulled the trigger and killed our forefather, Chris Hunt? Was that inhumane? Was that not inhumane? Was that not cruel? You understand? Was not that unjust? When he left um, a wife, okay, and children without a father. Hmm? You know, when I read this, when I saw this, I, he, listen, this thing turned me sick to my stomach. Okay, watch this. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. Now, give me from there, give me Sirach 36 verse 1 now. Okay, Sirach 36 verse 1. He's the last person to be saying such things. Okay. Read them. Ecclesiastes chapter 36 verse 1. Come on. Have mercy upon us, O Lord God of all, and mm. hold us. Read. And send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Come on, because the nations don't seek after the Lord. Read. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power. That, that's the prayer of vengeance right there. We must pray for vengeance, brothers and sisters. Pray for vengeance. Okay, come on. As thou was sanctified in us before them, so be thou magnified among them before us. Read. And let them know thee as we have known thee, that there is no God but only thou, O God. Because that's the only way where they will acknowledge that the most high God is the only God on this earth. Read. Show new signs and make us a strange wonders. Glorify mm. thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Come on. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. That's the prayer of vengeance right there. Read that again, read that again, verse 7. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 7. Read. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take mm -hmm. away the adversary and destroy the enemy. That's the prayer. It says, raise up indignation upon these heathens that don't know the Lord. It says, and pour out wrath, meaning anger. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. That's the righteous prayer of vengeance right there. Verse 9. Jump down to verse 9. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 9. Really? Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire. Mm -hmm. And let them perish that oppress the people. You see what the Bible is saying? So if they, if it says, let him that escape it be consumed by the rage of the, that's nuclear fire, okay? Let them perish that oppress the people. The white man is oppressing us. The Lord says we must pray that he perish on this earth. Vengeance, rain. Smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say. That's the white man. The, the heads of the rulers of the heathen is the white man. Go ahead. That say. There is none other but we. You see that thing? So who's, who's saying that? The white man is the only one that is saying that, that there is none other but him. He's the one that says he's God and he's worshipped in all the churches. Okay? Now watch this. Give me Revelation 18. Okay? Revelation 18 verse 8. We must pray for vengeance, brothers and sisters. Okay? You must shake off that Christian spirit. Okay? That spirit of Christianity. Read that. Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. Read that. Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. Because America is in bed with all these nations and they are benefiting from America's riches, which America steals from the continent of Africa and leaving us impoverished, you understand, and in a desolate estate. Jump down to verse 10, come on. 
Verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the rest of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Mm -hmm. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Now that's heavy right there. Read verse 10 again. Read verse 9. Read 9 and 10 together. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image. The beast, the beast is the white man. Okay. The beast, that's the white man. That's America. And his image, meaning the white image of Jesus. Come on. And receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. So the mark is going into sin. Give me Job 10, 14 real quick. And receive his mark in his forehead or in his, in his hand. The mark is sin. He's going into sin. Job 10, verse 14. Watch this. Job chapter 10, verse 14. If I see, then thou markest me. What did he say? If I sin, then thou markest me. If I sin, then thou markest me. Come on. And thou would not acquaint me from mine iniquity. So the mark is the mark of the beast is sin, philosophies, politics. You understand? Go back to where it was homosexuality. All nations can be saved. That's the mark of the beast, sin. Blasphemy against the word of God. Go back to where it was at now. Revelation 14, read verse 10 now. Revelation chapter 14, verse 10. Mm -hmm. The same shall drink of the wine of the rest of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Mm -hmm. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So what we're reading here is the judgment and the punishment for worshipping the image of the beast. The worshipping the white image of Jesus and the philosophy and the, what, the philosophy that comes with it, which is Christianity. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Psalm 75, verse 8. Psalm 75 and verse 8. He says what? He says that part right there says, And the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. So when something is poured out and it's not mixed with something else, you know, you ever, say, you, you ever drink this concentrated juice? It's concentrated. You need to mix it with water to dilute it. But this wrath right here, this, this wine that is poured out without mixture, you don't need to mix it with nothing. You must get it raw in its purest form. Okay? Psalm 78, 75, verse 8. Read that. Psalm 75, verse 8. Come on. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, mm. and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he pours out of the same. Come on. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. You see what the Bible is saying? This is judgment right here. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. That goes into blood. It is full of mixture. He poured out of the same, meaning of the same cup that is red, but the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. Meaning what? They're going to drink the full cup and the dregs that are left at the bottom of the cup. The whole thing, they're going to drink the whole thing, including the dregs. Okay, watch this. Give me that in Lamentations 421 real quick. Okay. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 21. Read. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Talk about the head, the head of the heathen. The head of the heathen, that's Edom. I do mean America, Babylon the Great. Go ahead. That dwellest in the land of Uz. Mm. The, the cup also shall pass through unto thee. Come on. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. You see what the Lord is saying? He says they're gonna, they, have to, they have to drink of the cup of the wrath of the Lord that is poured out without mixture. Go ahead. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter Wait. of Zion. Come on. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. 
So the Lord is saying no more captivity when Esau is brought down. No more captivity. Meaning what the same cup that we drank out of Esau, Edom, the white man must drink out of the same cup because they must get judgment for what they've done to us. Vengeance. Okay. That's the true reparations from the Mosai. Give me that in Isaiah 51. Okay. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 23. Read that. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 23. Come on. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. So the Lord is saying the same cup that we drank out of, including the dregs, is as Edom is going to drink in out of the same cup. Jump up to verse 22. Read that. So we get it. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 22. Come on. Thus say the Lord, thus say thy Lord, the Lord, and thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, mm -hmm. I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. The Lord is promising us is that we're not going to drink the cup of the wrath of the Lord. We're never going to drink it again. No more captivity. Because the Lord is going to what? He's going to plead the cause of his people. He's going to bring forth vengeance on the head of the heathen, which is the white man and all his European allies. The Lord says, I'm going to judge them. Okay. The most said God, he will deliver on his promises. Like we read earlier on at the beginning of the class in 2nd Isaiah 15 verse 1 down. Okay. Watch this. Now, give me the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Because Christ commanded us that we must pray for vengeance against our enemies. We must do that thing. Every day when you send up your prayers, you must pray for the Lord to bring forth vengeance against those that are oppressing us. Read what you got. Luke 18 verse 1. Come on. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Read. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So pray always and don't faint. Come on. Say, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. No, that's talking about himself. Come on. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. So the widow is making reference to us, the 12 tribes of Israel. We are the widow, okay? We are saying, it says what? It says, and there was a widow in that city, and she came unto me, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Go ahead. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard men. Come on. Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, mm. lest by her continual coming she weary me. So you see, what, that's what the Lord wants. He says, yes, because this widow troubles me. The Lord says we must trouble him day and night. You understand? I will avenge him. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. Meaning what? She's exhausting me by what? By crying unto me to avenge them of their enemies. Read. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge says. And shall Come not on. God avenge his own elect, which cry mm. day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Read. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Right. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Because our people don't believe that only Christ, Christ is only coming to deliver his people, the 12 tribes of Israel. They don't believe that. That's why it says, yea, he says, I will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Our people don't believe that Christ is only coming to deliver us. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 35, verse 1. Psalms 35 and verse 1. Psalm, chapter 35, verse 1. Read. Plead my cause, O Lord, with mm. them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. That's just, that's vengeance right there. David is praying for vengeance. Come on. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. 
The shield and buckler is what? Is the word of the Most High God. That's the shield and buckler. Give me that in Psalms 18 real quick. Okay. The shield and buckler. Okay. The shield and buckler, that is the Most High God's laws. Psalms 18 verse 2. Read that. Psalm chapter 18 verse 2. Come on. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my mm. buckler. You see that? My buckler. Come on. And the horn of my salvation and my high power and my high tower. Okay. okay, let's go back. Read Psalms 35, verse 2 again. Psalms chapter 35, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Come on. Throw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Really? Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Because that's what the white man does on a daily basis if you read Micah 2 verse 1. Come on. Let them be as sharp before the wind, and let really? the angel of the Lord chase them. Mean what, mean what? The angel of death is going to chase them and put them to death, destroy them, wipe them out. Come on. Let their way be dark and slippery, and mm. let the angel of the Lord persecute them. That's right. Come on. For without cause have they hid for me they are net in the pit, which mm. without cause they have digged for my soul. Come on. Let destruction come upon him at unawares. And let his net that he hath hit catch himself. Into mm. that very destruction, let him fall. You see what the Bible is saying? This the, David is praying for vengeance. He says, let destruction come upon him at unawares. When he's not expecting it, he says, destruction must come upon this white man. And let his net, let his net, he says, let his net that he hath hit catch himself. Into that very destruction, let him fall. Next verse, come on. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. Mm. It shall rejoice in his salvation. That's supposed to bring joy to your heart when what? When our enemies are destroyed. Jump down to verse 20. Okay, come on. Psalm chapter 35, verse 20. Read. For they speak not peace. Mm -hmm. but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Because that's what the white man does. That's why they came here, they took the land, they took the, our land, our houses, our resources through violence. Go ahead. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, aha, aha, our eye had seen it. That's what we read in Lamentations 2, verse 16 and 17. Come on. This thou hast seen, O Lord, Keep not silence. O oh Lord, be not far from me. Okay, Stay up again. thyself. Psalm chapter 35, verse 22. Read. This thou hast seen, O oh Lord. Keep not silence. O oh Lord, be not far from me. So David is praying in the spirit. He says, this art thou seen. What is he? What's the Lord seen? The Lord is seeing what the heathens are doing unto us. He says, keep no silence. He's begging the Lord. Don't keep silence for what they are doing to us. Oh, Lord, be not far from me. Come on. Stay up thyself and awake to my judgment. Meaning even unto my cause. He says, stay up thyself and awake to my judgment. Read. Even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Come on. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to thy righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Let not them, they, he mustn't let the heathen rejoice over our fall. Come on, which is what they are rejoicing right now. That's why we have Christmas. They are going to celebrate Christmas to rejoice over our fall. Ray, come on. Let them not say in their hearts, ah, so would we have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. That's what lamentation, that's Jeremiah is quoting David. Go ahead. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at mine hurt. Mm -hmm. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. You see that thing? Jump down to chapter 36, verse 1. Come on. Psalms chapter 36, verse 1. 
The transgression of the wicked says within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. Because they don't fear the most high God. That's why they do the things that they do. They don't even hide it no more. Come on. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. You see that thing? That's what that Yanus Waluz was doing. Come on. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He mm -hmm. has left off to be wise and to do good. You see what they've done? It says the words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He has left off to be wise and to do good. Meaning he is decided to hell with being wise, according to the scriptures, to hell with doing good, according to the scriptures. I'm going to give my mouth to iniquity and deceit. Go ahead. Verse four. Come on. He devises mischief upon his bed. Mm. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. He said, they don't hate evil. That's what we read in Micah 2 verse 1. Give me the book of Psalms 50 verse 21 now. Come on. Psalms chapter 50 verse 21. Great. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself, but Great. I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Because these things, all these evil things that the white man has done upon this earth and together with all his European allies and all these other nations that are helping him, guess what? The Lord says, these things has thou done and I kept silence. That's what David in the previous chapter says, keep no silence, O God. He says, thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. Because judgment does not come upon this earth for this white man. He thinks he's one with the Lord. But God says, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Right now, that's what the Lord is doing. The Lord is setting us in order before their eyes. That's time for what Esau understands. His time, his time of rulership is over. Watch this. Give me Psalm 58 verse 1. Okay, come on. Psalm chapter 58 verse 1. Read. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? O ye sons of men, sons of men, sons of the wicked. Come on. Yea. In heart you work wickedness. You weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The Lord is saying, listen, he says, in heart, in your mind, you work in wickedness. That's what we read in the previous chapter when we we're reading, uh, what was we reading? Psalms 36. You see, he says, oh, he says what? In heart you work wickedness. He says, weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Look at the violence of your hands that you've done in the earth. Compare it. It does not compare to anybody that has done what they've done to Israel. Come on. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Mm. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. That's what Yanusi Walus was doing. Go ahead. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Mm -hmm. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth the ear. Meaning what? Is it their poison? Ear. Hold on. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent, meaning a poisonous snake. They are like the deaf adder that stopped their ear, meaning they're not going to hear nothing. That's why when we're reading about the Hereros and the Nama, he says, listen, we want reparations. They say, Germany was says they have no plans in doing that. You understand? They, they're sending letters of appeal so that the government, the German government can actually do what? Pay reparations for, for taking their land to return the land back and for the lives that they, they've lost because of what? Because of genocide over there in Namibia. Go ahead. Which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming mm. never so wisely. You see, you see, our people when they tweet on, when they ask for reparations, they want their land back. Guess what? They are trying to charm this white man. The law says he is never gonna be charmed by nothing. The only way you're gonna get his attention, we're gonna read about it next. Read the next verse. Go ahead. Break their teeth, oh God, in uh -huh. their mouth. That's the only time when the Lord is gonna get the white man's attention. He says what? Break their teeth, O oh God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O oh Lord. The Lord says the only way you're going to get their attention is to break their teeth off. Meaning what? Kill them. Put them to death. We're not going to do it. The Lord will do it when he returns. When you read Isaiah 63 verse 1 down. Go ahead. Come on. Let them melt away as waters which run continually. Mm. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as 
as cut in pieces. They're going to be cut in pieces because the Lord is going to descend into the earth with his angels, millions upon millions of them. The, 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 the white man has no one. He has, listen, he's not going to, there's no fight here. Okay, there's no fight. Understand that. Keep going. As a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away. Mm. Like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Meaning what? They're going to be wiped off. Come on, read verse 9. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. He says, both when they are alive and in his wrath, the Lord is going to do that thing. Go ahead. Verse 10. Watch this. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. When he seeth the what? When he seeth the vengeance. The only time when the righteous will rejoice in when the right, is when the righteous seeth the vengeance. So an apology is not going to make us rejoice. That's what the Lord is telling you right here is that the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. The only time when we're going to rejoice is when we see vengeance be done upon our enemies that are oppressing us. An apology is not going to make the righteous rejoice. An apology is going to make the unrighteous of our people that worship white Jesus rejoice because our people, when they see the white men apologize, they are okay with that. Mm -mm. The righteous, we are not okay with it. We want to see blood. We want to see the Lord coming down here and wreaking havoc on this earth and punishing these nations that have been oppressing us ever since. That's vengeance right there. You better pray for that thing. Go ahead. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Hmm. That's, do you see that? That's therapy right there. The righteous are going to wash their feet in the blood of the wicked. That's therapy. You see, that's not, not mm -mm, this is physical. This right here is physical. It's not spiritual. Mm -mm. This is physical right here. Go ahead. Watch this. Verse 11. So that a man shall say, verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Mm, you see that? Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. You see the reward of the right. We see what the reward of the righteous is. The reward of the righteous is to see vengeance and to wash their feet in the blood of the wicked. That's the reward of the righteous right there. Go ahead. Verily, he is a God that judges in the earth. Verily, he is a God that judges in the earth. Give me Psalms. Give me Psalms 37, verse 14. Psalms 37, verse 14. Let's read that. Psalms chapter 37, verse 14. Mm -hmm. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. You see that thing? They just, listen, they always want to, they always want to accuse us of every little thing that we do. That's why they are always watching us. That's why they want to see what we are doing when we are in the house. They, they want to know, Mark Zuckerberg is all over your phone. Mark, Mark Zuckerberg is traveling with you. Because we go Facebook, we go WhatsApp, okay? J Jack Doss is traveling with you. We go Twitter. You can help yourself. You understand? Keep going. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, mm -hmm. and their bows shall be broken. God says their bows are going to be broken. These missiles that they're going to launch, listen, they are going to be broken by the millions of angels that are going to enter into this earth, the day of vengeance. Go ahead. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. Because he, guess what? Because... They are the, the, the wicked. Listen, this white man is rich, he's filthy, filthy rich. But on that day, that man is not going to deliver him on that day. Go ahead. For, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken. Oh, but the Lord, Come on. but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. He says, The arms of the wicked are going to be broken. That's why it says, Break their teeth, O oh God, in their mouth. Give jump down to verse 19. Come on. Psalms chapter 37, verse 19. Read. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. You see what he's saying? He says, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall not be, they shall be satisfied. Watch this. This is talk about the righteous. Read verse 20. Come on. But the wicked shall perish. 
Mm. And the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. Because guess what? What's going to happen? The Lord is going to have, the Lord has a sacrifice in Bozra. Give me that in Isaiah 63. We're coming back here. Okay. Isaiah 63 verse 1. Because he is telling you, he says, but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume. Into smoke shall they consume away. We watch God. Isaiah 63 verse 1. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? Come on. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Come on, this is Christ now. Come on. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treaded in the wine fat? The wine fed is making reference to what the people, Edom, that is going to what the Lord is going to trot them down, like somebody that is dipping their feet in wine press, creating wine. Go ahead. I have trodden the wine press alone, mm. and of the people, there was none with me. Come on. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and mm. their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I mm. will stain all my raiment. And I will stain all my raiment. That's why it says, is, is what? He says what? He says if he dipped in blood. He says what? Let's get that in Revelation 19. So I don't butcher it. Okay. Revelation chapter 19. Verse 13. Read that. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. You see that thing? He says he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. It was the way he was stained with the blood. It's as if he dipped it in blood. That's how much killing the Lord is going to do when he returns on this earth. Go back to Isaiah 63 now. Read verse 4. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 4. Mm -hmm. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. Hmm. And the year of my redeemed is come. Now, this is beautiful right here. It says, for the day of vengeance is in my heart. Because the righteous must see it. It's not how you feel. Mm -mm. The righteous must see the day of vengeance. The righteous must, must wash their blood, must wash their feet in the blood of the wicked. Okay? All we have to do, brothers and sisters, we just have to hold on in this truth, endure until the end, until the Lord returns, or we die in this truth. But that's the message. That's the mission right there. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. Psalms 37. Okay? Psalms 37 verse 20. Read. Psalms chapter 37 verse 20. Come on. But the wicked shall perish, mm. and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. Come on. They shall consume, into smoke shall they consume away. Hmm. Now watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 43, verse 1. Psalms chapter 43, verse 1. Read that. Psalms chapter 43, verse 1. Come on. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Mm. Deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. That's what we read in uh, Three Holy Children, verse 9. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. That's Edom. Or deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. Next verse. Come on. For thou art the God of my strength. Mm -hmm. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? He says, there is, I'm going mourning because of the oppression of the enemy. He says, why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? That's why it says, arise, O Lord. Okay. Arise, O Lord. Why are you sleeping? Because why we need deliverance. That's what the law says. We must what we must weary him out. Daily we must be praying for vengeance so the Lord can deliver us from these wicked demonic heathens that are around about us. Give me Psalms 46, verse 1. Watch this. Psalms 46, verse 1. Okay, come on. Psalms chapter 46, verse 1. Read. God is our refuge and strength. Mm -hmm. A very present help in trouble. A very present. The Lord is always present in time of trouble. 
We are in trouble as a nation right now. Israel is in a state of emergency. Okay, come on. Therefore, we will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Because where, how is this going to happen? What type of weaponry will cause this to happen? Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 13, verse 13. Mm. This is what's going to happen. This is the reason why he's saying what he said right there. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 13. Watch this. Okay, come on. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place really? in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. That's why, because when the Lord is coming up, is coming up unto the people, he will what? He will invade them with his troops. You read about that in the book of Habakkuk, chapter three. Okay, go back to where he was at now. Psalms 46, verse two, come on. Psalms chapter 46, verse two. Read. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, because of what? Because of nuclear weapons. Give me the book of Job chapter 20, verse 24. Okay, Job 20, verse 24. No, Job 20, verse 24. That's it right there. That's it right there. Read what you got. Job chapter 20, verse 24. Read. He shall flee from the iron weapon. And That's the bow the white man. shall strike him. He says the white man is going to flee from the iron weapon. This iron weapon, this is the missile right here. Okay, read. And the bow of steel shall strike him through. That's the missile, read. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yay. The body is the, the glittering head. sword. Says, this, hold on. This iron weapon, the iron weapon and the bow of steel that will strike the white man through America, he says, it is drawn and cometh out of the body. The body is the earth. Okay, come on. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his call. You see what he said? The glittering sword, this glittering sword, that's the missile. That's the ICBM missile. The glittering sword cometh out of his call. Meaning what? That's talk about the missile silos, okay? That are, that are what? That are built into the earth. Read. All darkness shall be hid in his no, secret no, no, place. No, 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 no. Come on, read verse 25 again. You are skipping stuff here. Verse 25 again. Job chapter 20, verse 25. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his call. Terrors are upon him. Terrors are upon him because nobody has seen anything like this before. Go ahead. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. He says, a fire not blown, a fire not blown shall consume this white man. Be meaning what? This type of fire that will be generated by these nuclear missiles, he says, you're not going to put this fire out. Okay, come on. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. You see what the Lord is saying? Because that's vengeance. Vengeance is coming. You understand? Vengeance is coming on this earth. And the most, that's the day of the Lord's judgment. That's the day of the Lord's sacrifice. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. Psalms 46. Read verse 3. Psalms chapter 46, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, because guess what? On this day, every bit of God's creation, they're going to know that the Lord is in the earth on that day. Come on. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, mm -hmm. the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. That's the Jordan River right there. Go ahead. God is in the midst of her. She mm. shall not be moved. Come on. God shall help her. And that right early. The Lord is going to deliver Israel. That's what he said right there. The Lord will deliver Israel. And when the Lord is delivering Israel, our enemies are going to be put down. Go ahead. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. Mm. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. That's some heavy stuff right there. You can read about that in 2 Exodus chapter 13. 
Go ahead. The Lord of hosts is with us. The, the Lord of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of hosts is with us. The most that God is with us. We're not alone in this walk. We're not alone in this fight. The Lord is with us. Go ahead. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come. Behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. Read. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. Come he on. breaketh the bow and mm. cutteth the spear in sunder. Read. He burneth the chariot in the fire. The most high God is going to do that thing. Christ will wreak havoc upon this earth to deliver his children. Go ahead. Come on. Be still and know that I am God. Mm. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. You see what he's saying? He says, be still, O Israel. I know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. Because how is the Lord going to be exalted among the heathen? Because he's going to give these nations a beat down. That's how he's going to be exalted among them because he's going to be give, they're going to give these nations a beat down. Fire and brimstone. There's going to be hell on earth on this day. Okay? Read again. Psalms chapter 46 verse 10. Come on. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Come on. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God mm. of Jesus is our refuge. Selah. You see what he's saying? The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Psalms 47 verse 1. Watch this. Mm. Psalm chapter 47 verse 1. Come on. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Mm. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Because on that day, we will receive the kingdom and we would de get deliverance from our enemies that hate and despise us. He says, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Go ahead. For the Lord most high is terrible. Mm. He is a great king over all the earth. Over all the earth. Now go back to Sirach now. Ecclesiastes 36. Sirach 36. Read verse 8. Okay. Sirach 36 verse 8. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 36 verse 8. Great. Right. Make the time short. Remember the covenant. And let them declare thy wonderful works. And that's the prayer we must make. If to, for the most High God to make our time short in captivity. Make the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Ray, come on. Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire. Mm. And let them perish that oppress the people. Come on. Smite in sunder the heels of the rulers of the heathen that say, there is none other but we. He says, smite in sunder the heads, the heads of the rulers of the heathen. That's the white man. Go ahead, verse 11. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. As from the beginning, as it rightfully, that's our inheritance right there. Go ahead. O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name and upon mm. Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. Because we are the heir. We are the heirs of God. We are the apple of his eye. Come on. Oh, be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Come on. Fill Zion on. with thy fill Zion with thine unspeakable oracles and thy people with thy glory. Really? Give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. Now watch this. Is okay. Let me take, let me read. He says, reward them that wait for thee, and let thy prophets be found faithful. O Lord, hear the prayer of thy servants according to the blessing of Aaron over thy people, that all they which dwell upon the earth may know that thou art the Lord, the eternal God. All praises to the most high God. Let's break bread. I'm gonna end the class right there. All praise to the Lord this day. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. 
that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 